Oh wait, I forgot. I'm not wearing I'm not wearing the right jersey. Give me a second. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Somebody said whatever this music is, please no more. Goodness, dude. We play all sorts of music here. We were in the well, we were in like the punk rock vibe. Was that like two days ago? Yeah, I had to put the uh, Mexico kit on. Yep. I uh, nope. Thank you for the thirty-three months. I appreciate it. Original name guy. Thank you for the twenty-three months. You've been brogged. Thank you for the three months. I appreciate you, Master Stitch. Thank you for the eleven months. This shirt hurts my eyes. You know, outside of the chemical reaction my skin has to it, it, it uh, looks pretty good. Outside of the chemical reaction that, like, you know, the boils that break out underneath the kit, it's pretty, it's okay. Ben, thank you for the four months. Watch the video. How could you betray the U.S. like that? Because my age lost. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> but what you want from me, bro? The My age lost. I tried. All right, I even spun one of those YouTube -y wheels to try and get two more teams. It even freaking didn't do anything. Gashead, thank you for the the channel points. What's this say? Hi Z, don't mean to take the mick, but have you seen Taunton Story IRL? Yeah, I have. I feel bad for him. I mean, Apparently the, the the club president or whatever his actual title was that I met while I was there, he's away on like medical leave too. So I think it seems like everything is just not going well. Oh yeah, everything's just not everything's breaking down. How were the ages seated? They weren't. The group stage was just randomly drawn. So there was no there was no age seating. Missing the home game, my club, because I'm sick. Well, at least I can watch the stream in a second screen. Wow. Love freaking talking about. Uh, what Mexico shirt? When did you commit footballing treason? I know. I know. If you watch the World Cup of Ages video, this is my restitution for the failure. Uh, yeah, last night I saw Lord of the Rings in concert, which was really cool. I've had those tickets for like four months because it sold out really quickly. But, you know, I got suckered in by Instagram ads and I was like, wait, when is that happening? And I Googled it and it was like, oh, it's coming to New York in four months. And I was like, sick, must be a ton of seats left. And it was just, there was like 10 seats left. So... Yeah, I went, I, I went to Lord of the Rings in concert last night. It was awesome. Uh, very cool. They they brought, like, the whole choir and everything. So it wasn't just, like, the instruments. There were, like, you know, 50 people flanked by children's choirs for particular notes they needed to hit, I guess. And they would just stand up, and the light would go on them, and they'd be like, oh, oh, oh. You know, I mean, just electric and then they had like individual singing soloists for like the parts where you need one voice instead of a billion voices uh concert not mu so not musical not like a lord of the rings musical how about the you know like no i it was they play the movie right what it's called is it's like it's it's performing the Lord of the Rings score to film is the way they word it on the, th but it's basically, it's an orchestra with a choir and everything that performs the audio live, like not the spoken word audio, but like the music of the movie live as the movie is being played on the screen. 
So they've got the movie up there. Then they turn the, uh, you know, they turn, it's basically like going into a video game and turning the music off, right? So you still have the, you know, the sound effects, so the clanging of swords, the spoken word uh, stuff. Enough yapping, start the save already. I'm not going to play FM today, just because you said that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not having it today, Smacked. Smacked! I'm not having it! Smacked! Smacked! I have been talking for four minutes! If you don't want me to talk for four minutes, Smacked! I'm just kidding. I love you. We're going to play FM at some point. I'm just talking about what happened yesterday, and I'll get right into it. I swear. I swear. So, anyways, where was I? They, they, they have, like, the actual audio of the movie, but they also have subtitles because the, because the orchestra, they want to be a little louder, right? So the music is a little louder than normal. And the orchestra just performs the score live. There's like a conductor up there and everything. It's very, very cool. It's very, very cool. I smash my joke. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it, it was neat. They, you know, they, they, so I got th they did the two towers, which is the second of the three, you know, in the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. And it was really cool. Yeah, no, and the orchestra is like, you know, in front of the stage, and then at the back of the stage, there's a giant screen playing the movie. So, I enjoyed it. Dan Hewis, I played do a Kenshi stream. I've done that in the past. I freaking love Kenshi. Do we get a new job today? I mean, we could always get a new job. We are all we're definitely looking. We've already been at Saint Etienne for two years, but um, we'll see which orchestra. I don't know. An orchestra. The first chair violin lady was sick. You know, my favorite. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find it on Spotify. But there, there's one song where there was like a violin solo. I think it's this song. We'll uh, give me, give me a second. But this was the sickest song to me live. Everybody's got their own. I think this was it. Is this the one with the solo violin? I don't know. This is Riders of Rohan. No. I want the theme of Rohan. No, I don't think that's it. Can you imagine watching this live, though? It was awesome. Oh, this is it. Can you imagine watching somebody shred this live? I was on the edge of my seat. I was seated on my tippy toes. Dialed in. Don't give me more of the... I don't know what the song is called, unfortunately. Yeah, I had a lot of violins. There was a lot of violins out there. Some flutes. Where's, dude, where the hell is this? Not Helm's Deep. I think this is probably going to be it. I don't know. I'm going through a whole playlist of Rohan-themed Lord of the Rings songs. We'll be here for two hours. No, no, I'm, I'm going to find it. I'm the Lord of the Rings expert. Oh, well, we always need one. No, it's when they're like riding into the city for the first time. That's when she was absolutely shredding. They're riding into the Rohan city for the first time. That's what I need. Whatever that song is. I saw Lord of the Rings and, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings with live music. Um... Fourth Orlingus, the ride of the Rohirrim, no. The Battle of Pelennor Fields, no. Okay, so what, dude, bro. Yeah, the Charge of the Rohirrim is great, but like, hold on, I, I can find it. I just have to um, use my brain. The bro hero, <laughs> am I right, you know? When they arrive. 
What, what's the song, though? What moment are you looking for? Where they arrive in, like, you know, Gandalf and the, and the lads arrive in the city that Rohan has. Reckon it, thank you so much for the year. Like, what? which one is that? Which one is that? It's in the two towers, clearly. The Plains of Rohan? I, I hold on. I think it's this one. Yes! She was, like, literally rising out of her chair, like, levitating. She was adding little, like, trills in there. Just, like... Oh, disgusting. Absolutely filthy work on the strings there. Devilishly tricky. I have no idea if it actually is, but. So that was what I did yesterday. It was freaking awesome. That was what I did yesterday. That, and I went to the, obviously, the stream had to end early because we went to the MLS headquarters. But how could you not talk about that? Perfecto, thank you for the year. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Would recommend seeing any of your favorite movies in concert if you have the chance. Because it's also just hype. Everybody's, like, cheering all the time. Everybody's like, wow, yeah! Like, people just appear on screen and everybody's like, yeah! And you're like, oh, okay, we're doing that now. Cool. But Perfecto, thank you for the year. Thank you for supporting the stream. Cake or death, thank you for the nine months. The problem with my life is I've said too much in the past and no one forgets it. You're getting clopped. That's true. Rolo, thank you for the prime, dude. Artem, thank you for the nine months. I've started my history teacher school practice and I'm terrified of 15-year-olds. Yeah, I was a bold choice in career then. QA guy, thank you for the 36 months. Congratulations on three years. Any tips for the long haul fr uh, flight to Australia? Bring melatonin so you can sleep uh, if you're going that direction. If you're if you're not going that direction, then don't sleep. Bring caffeine pills or drink coffee or something. Even if you don't normally, if you don't normally, it'll it'll do it for you even more. Um, you the, like the flight is a day, so whatever you do throughout the day, right? Stand up, drink water, bring whole meals in your bag. I'm talking like peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a bag of chips for lunch, right? I'm talking like the meals they will serve you unless you're in first class, which let's be honest, you're not probably. I'm not like I don't know anybody who is. I'm convinced that's literally just the Elon Musk's of the world that are in first class for those types of flights, right? Somebody that has done something reprehensible in their life to get there or is in the million mile club, whatever the hell that is. I've never really been quite sure what that is, but I hate airplane food. It sucks. They overcomplicate it. They really overcomplicate it. Because, like... Dude, just give me penne pasta with marinara sauce. Almost nobody hates that. If they do, give them chicken and rice. But no, they're like, oh, yo, we've got this gnocchi with a with a cream sauce reduction i'm like we're at 35,000 feet plenty of airlines have fine airplane food they don't it all sucks i've never had a good meal on an airplane unless i accidentally got selected to move up in class i i disagree they overcomplicated constantly they're like do you want lasagna i'm like no i don't want lasagna out of your microwave right I don't. I don't want lasagna on I don't want lasagna out of your microwave. I want you to make me a sandwich. And then they mess that up. Right? Like they, they I it, it, uh. First of all, they almost always pick something hot, which means they've got to heat every single dish up in a microwave. 
which sucks. And they always pick something super complex. And I'm like, give me a sandwich with ham and cheese and my option of condiment and a bag of Lay's. Is it like, how are we not doing this? Because I get you can't do peanut butter and jelly. People are allergic to peanuts. And I get maybe some, you know, you got a dairy-free option or a gluten-free option when it comes to the sandwich. But no, it's, it, it's, 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 yeah, they, they got to go for like the baked ZD. They're going for the lamb chops. I don't want lamb chops. I'm not flying on the plane for lamb chops. <laughs> like, I forgot you've been on every plane. I've been on a lot of planes. I've been on a lot of planes. It's impossible to ever to be on every plane ever. Right. But I've been on a lot of planes, more than the average person. Right. I've been to like 52 countries. I've got a globe trotting family. And I hate airplane food. Ask me anything. And I hate it. <laughs> Dad, thank you for the 27 months. No, I've flown on non American airlines as well, dude. Actually, my least favorite airline is a non American airline. Lufthansa, if you're watching, you're my least favorite company on the face of the earth. I'm aware there are companies doing worse things than you, but I have never been more wronged by a company in my life than Lufthansa. So fight me. Because I will literally, at every opportunity I'm presented for the rest of my life, talk so much trash about Lufthansa that I, my, goal is, my goal is to actually put some sort of dent in Lufthansa because they suck. They suck so hard. Harder than any like any company I've I, so yeah all right Lufthansa do I want Lufthansa to liquidate no I don't want everybody to lose their job right I'm anticipating the Twitter backlash to that now if everybody out at Lufthansa was guaranteed a job and the people directly in charge of Lufthansa lost theirs I'd be happy with that I'd be satisfied. I've never been more convinced, more transparently convinced that a company was willingly taking advantage of people and was so poorly run that it didn't have any idea how to fix itself than Lufthansa. Just, just brazen, bold incompetence. Stubborn, immovable, intentional incompetence. belligerent willful incompetence now but I, I i would say most of the airlines i've flown on are uh are american airlines i mean sometimes you fly to other countries i've done um you know air france iceland air um obviously the british one um i you know british airways um the New Zealand one. Yeah, the one, I'd say the one oversight is probably the best airline in the world, whatever that is, like Emirates. I've never been on Emirates. Um, but I would say most other airlines I've been on, even a domestic Chinese airline before to go from Hong Kong to Beijing. Yeah. I've been on Fin Air before. I've been on, uh, I've been on Vueling, which was awesome. That is like a cattle car. That was hilarious. Um, I've been on um, EasyJet. I've been on Ryanair. Uh, yeah, so it's not just U.S. Uh, not just U.S. airlines. You know, I'm not that basic. Try uh, Delta. Delta is usually my preferred one. They have a hub in New York, um, which is, they have a ton of flights out of New York. Southwest was what we flew is when I was younger because they have a lot of flights out of Tampa. Have I flown Aer Lingus? No, I've not flown Aer Lingus. I've obviously seen terminals with Aer Lingus flights, but I don't think I don't think I've flown Aer Lingus. I might have. I've flown SAS. Uh, I flew Scandinavian Air actually to go to the Faroe Islands video. You guys remember the Faroe Islands video? I've flown. Uh, I've we flew SAS to Copenhagen from New York, uh, and then we. I think it was SAS again to uh, Torshavn, but I I don't remember exactly. Yeah, SAS food is bad. I mean, I it wasn't out like outstandingly bad. Like it's just bad. 
Every time I flew Turkish Air, I had a near-death experience. Or Tunis Air. Well, look, you know, the same certifications required for every pilot, but... I think, I think, dude, there's so few airline accidents. You're flying, you're, like, going to be safe. Unless you're going to get struck by lightning, you know. Or you're flying in a Boeing 737 MAX, apparently. <laughs> Lufthansa wasn't that bad for me. You got lucky. Lufthansa's the worst airline on the planet. You got lucky. The worst. The woke. The worst of all time. Thoughts on the AFCON champions not having a manager? I would think I could get the job, but I don't speak French, yeah. Yeah, I'm 35,000 feet in the air in an aluminum coffin. Dude, driving to the grocery store is, like, more dangerous than flying in an airplane. I realize that the concept of flying in an airplane terrifies a lot of people. I know, like, big content creators are afla uh, afraid of flying. I know, like, uh, Moist Critical is very afraid of flying. Um... Uh, and, you know, you're afraid of what you're afraid of. That's fine. I'm just, just statistically speaking, if you're able to uh, short circuit your brain with logic, it's like more dangerous to drive on a highway in the U.S. Like, if you're driving from Tampa to Orlando, it's more dangerous than flying in an airplane. Yeah. Cutie, uh, cutie Cinderella is afraid of flying. Yeah, a lot of people are afraid of flying. I, I think it's just an exposure thing. Uh, it might not be. I'm obviously no expert, but I was exposed to flying at a very young age, and I'm super comfortable with it. Almost like being on planes because I'm not working. If you made it through school in America, you can live through anything. I'm going to be honest. I like. I, I think that... As somebody that's lived in America my entire life, there's a ton of problems with the U.S., obviously, but I do think that it is kind of overblown as well in terms of the actual percent danger to your own livelihood that is being faced by just existing in the United States. Now, obviously, living in Florida, that goes way up because all I have to do is walk into a 7-Eleven and run into Florida Man, right? But, but just generally speaking, uh, I think that um, the percent danger to your life is not as, as high as is generally portrayed. Um, I think the logic is you could theoretically survive a car crash, but in a plane crash, you're dead. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about, like, getting in a fender bender. You know what I mean? But I understand the logic. That, like, if the plane crashes, like, you are dead. You know what I mean? You are dead. Uh, I mean... Unless you're that one dude that landed the plane in the Hudson River. But shout out to uh, Tom Hanks. Did a great job flying that plane. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that air travel, statistically speaking, is the... I, I don't know if somebody says the safest way to travel. I feel like walking is pretty high on the list. But as far as, like, cars and trains, I don't know the percentages, but I know car, like driving particularly in a highway situation is more dangerous than flying in a plane trains are probably safer too although train look trains do derail like that does happen um elevators the safest i think sleeping is probably the safest personally says so the lack of control <laughs> to me that's great the lot like you get in a plane and you don't have to worry about it. you just like, oh, cool. Somebody else has got it. Statistically, the safest form of travel is an elevator. <laughs> yeah, but it can only take you up and down. I guess you could make an elevator that would take you different directions, but why? Don't know if walking through Manhattan is the safest. Also, do you sound like my mom when I first moved here? She's like, are you going to be safe? I'm like, have you been to Manhattan in the last 20 years? I think there's a lot of, like, we live in a world 
where our perceptions of things are shaped by a few moments, right? Because we get this broad exposure to everything, but we only get bits and pieces from everywhere. So it's very difficult to get, you know, we feel like we have a full understanding, but we often don't get a full understanding of like of, of what a particular area is like. But we get pieces. We're like, if you go back 100 years, you like aren't even getting pieces. You're getting like one sentence maybe in the newspaper once a month. But I feel like we live in a world now where we get, you know, pe like bits and pieces of information about an area. And then we're like, oh, that must just be what it's like, you know. And that happens for Americans in the opposite direction as well. So my parents moved out of New York and now all they hear is bad stuff. And I'm like, you lived in New York City in the 80s. Yeah, New York City in the 80s was the end of the uh, Italian mob. I would not have wanted to live here. But, yeah. Newspaper Reverence, he plays News Tower streaming. I don't even know what that is, but, yeah. I, I, are you the new uh, commentator for Apple TV yet? No! Yeah, you only get the key highlights. And unfortunately, the key highlight... This is actually something... We talk about in history class, like when we were learning history, is you got to understand the average dude who was just tilling a field in the middle of England, nothing really happened their whole life, right? <laughs> like all you're getting are the highlights and they're like, you know, oh, and they pillaged this village and they like, you're just getting the highlights. The majority of people were doing nothing. They were just kind of chilling. Like... Just living life, you know? And I think that still holds true. It's like the majority of people are kind of just not really involved in anything. Yeah, like they're just kind of doing whatever. Just doing what people do. Hanging out, getting food, hanging, you know, going going to the movies, whatever. Like just, you know, the, the big dramatic high points that everybody hears about are outliers in the grand scheme of like what's happening in life. But yes, we did go to the MLS studios yesterday. That was fun. I uh, got to interview Bradley Wright Phillips about America, actually. Literally this topic. I just asked him stupid questions. I got to interview a lot of people and ask them funny questions, uh, which was really, really cool. I was very thankful they let us let us do that. Famous Dino, thank you for the tier one, brother. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Rolo, thank you so much for the prime. Isaac Cass, thank you for the 36 months. Alaris, my goodness. Has it been 61 months? That is such a long time. Dadam, thank you for the 27 months. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Goldman, thank you for the five months. Any day, thank you for the three months. Hell yeah. Keep up the good work from your French pronunciation, Nagler. Thank you, Perfecto. I appreciate the year, and I appreciate the help. I do. As much as I fight it sometimes, I appreciate it. I didn't ask him if they played FM. No. For your channel or their own public? For my, for our, so that stuff will be on our YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Uh, Taylor Twelman does that work at the Apple TV thing. Uh, did you ask Bradley uh, Wright Phillips if it's football or soccer? I did. His answer won't surprise you. But I did ask, I asked Bradley Wright Phillips. I was like, I think my, my favorite, when I was talking to him, I was like, what is one thing you've learned about America that you didn't know when you got here? And his actual answer was, they put bacon and cheese on everything. Everything. And he was like, it's great. But you'll get Brussels sprouts and they'll just be bacon and cheese on it. And you're like, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. You're goddamn right. What do, really? <laughs> I've never been more proud to be an American than when he said that. It's like they put <laughs> Bradley Red Phillips, like when we put bacon, they, they put bacon and cheese on everything. No, but I got to talk to the anchors. I got to talk to the people that worked at Span uh, on Span the Spanish because they do like a Spanish broadcast along with that. Um, Tony and Antonella, and they were both great. Like, we, yeah, we just don't point out the Mexico shirt. Okay, it hurts. You're about the YouTuber that got bitten by a werewolf. They turned into a like and subscribe. Oh, 
know if I get that. I don't know if I get it. A like and subscribe. Agent. I'm gonna give one of. Oops, my bad. Yeah, I'm Googling it right now. I, uh, lichen is derived from the word lycanthrope, meaning someone who suffers from lycanthropy, the professed ability or power of a human being to transform into a wolf or to gain wolf-like characteristics. Well, that's an A. Jeez. Wow, what a dad joke from Bagpuss. Did you hear about the YouTuber that got bitten by a werewolf? They turned into a like and subscribe. That's a brilliant dad. I mean, that is elite. Broke dad, thank you for the tier one, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. That is tremendous. Steal, steal that for your friends that will know what a lycanthrope is. Prove that Zealand isn't geek enough? I'm sorry, dude. I always game to my own hole, like my own closeted world. So that I do have holes in my my nerd knowledge. Like I'd never played Dungeons and Dragons until cracking open Baldur's Gate, that sort of thing. Highbrow nerd tier dad joke. We love those. No, but I got I got to ask like all the talent at uh, MLS Pass, just funny, stupid questions. You guys will really enjoy it, I think. When you have the up, like when you're able to watch it, Adler's gonna hammer uh, hammer through it the next couple of days. Uh, Baldur's Gate three stream win. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't think I'm ever gonna stream Baldur's Gate. That's one of those games that I like just learning it. But if you stream a game like that, you always have people just telling you how to do it or what's happening. And I, I, I think there's certain games that I would never want to stream just because I want to feel them out. You know, I want to feel them out on my own. No, I didn't talk to the French crew. Uh, they weren't there. It was just the English and the Spanish crew. Lon's first game of the season. Wait, really? Bro. Bro. Did the talent have a favorite MLS team? No, I didn't ask him that. I did ask chat. One of my questions was, is fight and would you consider, I kind of took almost like a Bobby Altoff approach where I made the interview like intentionally, like almost between two ferns esque. Like I would start the interview and I'd be like, Liam. And just stare at them for a second. <laughs> like, would you consider fight and win a cringe chant? Like, just stupid questions like that. Sign this story here in Kunda. Do I wish. We do have two offers out. We've got Fabio Chiarodia, the 24-year-old from Juventus. Uh, we're working on a deal for him right now. Left-footed, loves to play with the ball. Uh, very, very, very well-rounded, very sound physically. Um, yeah. So I asked them the important questions like that. Would you consider fight and win a cringe chant? Then we have our new, uh, who's a very talented forward we'd be able to make something of. And we're trying to move Dennis Kagan. We're trying to move uh, Stefan Firetog. We are also trying to move Mamadou Zane, but apparently that's going to be impossible until the end of time. Who knows why? Are we leaving? Uh, dude, we might not be. We've been rejected by every job we liked, which is a tale as old as time. And basically, unless Arsenal hires somebody from another world-class job uh, that we could then step in and try and, like, take control of, um, then we're going to be staying. Because that dude, 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 not my staff. Brohim. Goodness gracious. Not the staff. 
Oh, Mamelodi Sundowns. I've got rapport with this dude. I've got rapport with this dude. He's a brilliant fitness coach, and I speak the language. I've got rapport. I clicked cancel. I hate it here. I clicked the wrong thing at the end after doing all that. Literally clicked four different things. Ridiculous. Oh, do we have any 18s? Oh, yeah, we do. Montevideo City. Nicolas Pereira. Would you like to coach our set pieces, Nicolas? I know that you would, Nicolas. I know that you would. Bev, thank you for the 30 months. Rio, thank you so much for the tier one, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy the ad-free experience. It was on the toilet. The only two distinctive things I heard Zealand say where he he likes playing with balls and not my staff. Ah, yes. Only fans dropping soon. Can't wait. Why do the Swedish put barcodes inside their ships? <coughs> That's actually my number one dad joke that I tell in real life. 100%. That's the number one dad joke I tell in real life. Please say yes to this. Oh, you want... I've been playing at big club money, don't you? Anybody else feeling a $0 relegation release clause? Nah. But $5 million is probably a solid deal. Steve's going to be so mad at this offer. He's going to be like, you said What? Doo -doo. Remember when I said he was going to be mad at that offer? He wasn't. He was not. That's because I'm an expert. I know exactly what's going to happen. He wasn't mad. I never expected him to be mad. I don't know why we would um, expect him to be mad. Pierre Alain Frau. You're getting yeeted for Glenn Whelan. What did I let go of a fitness coach? I thought I had an open spot. Quest to add coaching staff, but also Pierre Allen. Frau. Oh, no, 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 no. I already, okay, I already added the fitness coach. It was the set piece coach, which is in a different spot. I got all confused. It was my mistake. Lord of the Rings music. You guys want more epic Lord of the Rings soundtrack? I'll add one song. I'll add one Lord of the Rings song. I'm going to add one Lord of the Rings song. Oh, he wants to discuss personal matters. What personal matters could he possibly want to discuss? Oh, he's struggling to fit in with the squad. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I've never had this before. I, uh, I've been lonely, and I think I should leave. Oh, dude. Um, I feel bad for you, Kyo Sang Yun. He said, "I've been lonely." Uh, we can look to find him a more suitable club. I, I guess. I mean, he's worth eight to twelve million. We only spent half a mil on him, so I, a sale wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But I wouldn't hate trying to develop him. Uh, let's see what the options are. I mean, I've never been in this before. Would a short leave of absence help? You can go away and refresh and be ready to take on the challenge of succeeding here. Oh, here we go. Here's your Lord of the Rings, by the way. Uh, I'm confident if you keep working hard, you'll be fine. He's indignant, so he's very upset about this. Uh, let's give him the short leave of absence. Let's try that. I think a short break would make me realize how much I want to leave.
Uh, bring another player to help you settle. Having a friend or compatriot could be really helpful for you. Uh, poor kid needs a friend. I mean, let, let me look first. Somebody needs to bring me a list of the South Korean U23s. Pohang Steelers, Lee Ching Yong. Oh, yeah, it's a national team kid. You've got Kim Yong Choi. Rambling Epic, thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. Uh, goalkeeper Jung Hyung Ho, uh, Jung Hyung Ho, uh, Park Dong Jun. I'm doing my best. It's pretty good for one mil, yeah, I know, but it's blowing a mil to keep this guy happy. Their right backs suck. You gotta loan him right away, right? I mean, yeah, our goal is to to just bring him in and then loan him out. I guess we go with the other center back, which would be uh, not Kim Min Q, who we we did scout. We know is a professional that's gonna work hard to reach his potential and be a decent player, but he's very far away from being a uh, good first team player. And there's Kim Young Choi. He's great leadership sound the issue is just his physical ability fairly professional and outspoken yeah let's try that uh, there are some players we could buy all right so we have promised to bring in a suitable player to help him settle shelter has got the promise to be sold if somebody pays 55 million and fire Tog's upset that we didn't play him at striker but that's just because he literally never played yeah, maybe the right back just because he's a professional he's going to be less annoying to deal with because yeah, obviously this guy's not going to be a first team type player but he's going to come in and play in the reserve team and just vibe, you know? What happened to the cohesion went way down when all of, uh, we had, s so there you go. We got our game of, we, game of thrones. We got our Lord of the Rings soundtrack in some more vibes from last night. Loan back length? No, he kind of needs to join now, actually. 700 for 10 games? That's literally $7,000. All right, he's probably worth more than that if we bring him over and then um, help this other kid settle. All right, we're bringing in another Korean. Oh no, Colne's going in for Kiarodia. We got an offer for uh, Pedro Bravo as well. Total value five and a half. Olympiacos, you have Champions League money. Okay. He, he wasn't going to get upset if we said no. Now, he doesn't have any friends that have uh, EU nationality. He's favorite player. His only favorite person is the head coach of the South Korean national team, Ozzy Tony Popovich. 
Thank you for the prime. Thanks for supporting the stream and enjoy your ad-free experience. Callum, thank you so much for the 34 months. I'm terrified I'll react if I ask them to clean it up. I've been walking on eggshells all day. Thank you. That's a B. That's a real solid dad joke there. Punya, thank you so much for the 11 months. I don't think this guy's going to get the appearances in the first team that he's hoping for, but, you know, we are. No, he, count, he counts towards foreign. We're not going to register him for the league. We're going to play him in the reserves and hopefully sell him on for a profit. I just asked him to endorse the move, and he's like, nah, I don't think I want to do that. I'm like, dude, I'm buying another Korean player for you. Bringing a suitable signing to help the player settle. I mean, that's such an annoying promise, man. Pleased at the efforts being made. Okay. Glad, he, glad he's pleased at the efforts being made. Feels more attention should be paid to trying to loan him out. I don't think anybody wants you, dude. You're 16. I mean, I respect your hustle, but I, I, don't, I don't think anybody's jumping on that. Raccoon, thank you for converting to the tier one. Exotic, 46 months. Exotic, thank you. Cool. 46 months. 46 months. Uh, challenger league. Yeah, either one of those. Whichever one you want, Jordan Passape. Oh, Dennis Kagan. Let's go. We got a $2.5 million offer for attacking midfielder Dennis Kagan, who's made like two first team appearances since he signed on a free last year. So that's some cash money. Some league dua offers for our boy Victor Okachukwu, which is great. And keep developing him in the second division of France. Keep him in France. Keep the vibes great for old Victor. April's gonna April's gonna be four years sub. That's crazy. We say hi to YouTube, Westbrook. I see you. Thank you. We have not said hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. How are you? How you doing? Good. Sorry you couldn't join us today. Thanks for checking it out. Hello, YouTube! Hi, YouTube. Oh, yay. Our scouts continue to work through the giant pile of players that I sent to them. Really appreciate that. You guys are doing great work. Very sorry I uh, overstacked you guys just a teensy-weensy little bit. All right, we've hit the Vanuatu crowd, which uh, probably not not the crowd we want to be in probably not the crowd of winners Hey, good news. We're probably down to scouting like.
Well, hello. How are you? I just got rejected by lawns. Why the hell are you talking to me? Pep left. It was Pep? It was literally Pep. He left Man City for Spain. We left Man City in 2024, took over the Spain job through a World Cup and a Euros, then went to Dortmund for a year, and Arsenal has now hired Pep Guardiola. So it was Arsenal's hiring that opened up a job for us. We've been rejected by Bayern after an interview. We got rejected by Arsenal. They didn't even interview us, but I kind of get it because they had the opportunity to get Pep Guardiola. But now Pep has left Dortmund, and that leaves us open for, let's see how good, how good was Dortmund last year. Finished third, Champions League, group stage, all the good stuff, you know. Same spot we finished in the French League, except it's freaking Dortmund, dude. Uh, yeah, they're filthy, stinking rich with a payroll three times the size of ours. More, you know, they're Dortmund. And they have decided they want to talk to us. Okay. This is the first time I've ever been approached for an interview in the entire save. Hi, uh, what's up, Yannick? I'm, how you doing? Time to cook. Time to cook. I'm not a squirrel. Thank you for the 30 months. Thanks for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Let's not fumble this chat. Let's not fumble this. This is probably our last opportunity to land a, jo a better job than St. Etienne. We love St. Etienne, but this is our last chance because whoever Dortmund hires is going to be from a level of like our types of teams. I would suggest my experience in international soccer more than makes up for any shortfalls in the club side. Uh, I know I've, I've, I've experienced in various other countries. What do you think makes you suitable to managing a club of this stature? Um, I spent the majority of my career building up considerable experience with smaller clubs in preparation for the opportunity to jump to a bigger club. I hope I get the chance here. Uh, why do you want to leave your current job after doing so much good work there? I mean, I think we've, we've gotten St. Etienne back to where it deserves to be at, but it's time to take the next step in my career. And I want to be here. Uh, what impact do you think your role in international management will have on your potential of duties? They don't take up too much time. Uh, we parted company with our last head coach much sooner than anybody anticipated. Can you offer assurances we won't be in for a repeat of that? Uh, yeah, I intend to commit to a long and successful career with the club. Uh, that's a one-year promise. We've learned that. So I will be at Dortmund for at least a full year. How would you feel about working with our general manager, Sven Mislanot? Is he good? Uh, yeah, he's good enough for me to not be bothered by it. What sort of budget would you be needing for uh, an overhaul to your coaching staff? What are we thinking, chat? What do we need? What do we desperately need? I'm not going to go no budget. I'm not like a pushover. Come on. I want to actually get my, I want to actually get a good coaching staff in place. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go huge. I'm going to go small to medium. Um, let's go medium. I'll be able to change my entire staff. Uh, what are your thoughts? On the vision, work within the budget, grow the reputation, increase commercial revenue, spend the spend the original transfer budget. <coughs> what? They're upgrading uh, training and youth facilities at the moment. Be recognized best of the rest. Oh, screw that. I want to beat Bayern, man. They didn't hire me. Screw that. I got I got beef. Agree. I would be expected to compete for a Champions League qualification berth. Yo, we setting expectations here? I kind of want to raise them, dude. I got bounced from the last job. They said no at Lawns because the, my expectations weren't high uh, weren't high enough. I, I I think we'd be able to challenge for a league title. I'd be disappointed if we didn't. No, I'm not agreeing. 
I didn't get the lawns job because I freaking agreed. And they were like, we didn't, you know, we didn't think you we were ambitious enough with what we had going on. Challenge for the league title. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's the most beautiful thing anybody's ever seen. $218 million transfer budget. Oh. I'm agreeing to that. And I'm agreeing to that. No other requests. Oh, boy, I'm excited. Oh, boy. Oh, I am excited. That is Juan Maldonado money. That is absolutely Juan Maldonado money. Ooh, you're telling me that there is a Dortmund offer out there that also includes 218 million. All right, Fire Tigs down to uh, explore transfer offers. We're going to take him off the loan list, at least right now, because, of course, we have to manage this like we are. You know, we have to manage this like we are not leaving, right? We don't want to screw ourselves over. Luis Torres feels he's underpaid. You got here last year, bro. You literally got here last year, and now you feel like you are underpaid. What do you want? Important player. Well, first of all, we're going to bring that down. Although I am, ha you know, I would like to remove both of those if I can, and he is happy here. So, okay, it's not he's not asking for anything crazy, which is totally fair. Um, relegation release clause is going to be $10 million. We're not going to get relegated, though. Uh, but you never. I, the reason I'm not putting it at zero is because if I leave the club, I don't want to have screwed them over. You know, it's a fair request. I'm going to send a contract your way, Louise. Extend your contract another year. Borussia Dortmund, Zealand, give me a here we go right now. We're gonna have to select our gold club, uh, gold cup squad uh, tomorrow. But we're just kind of key highlighting through the group stage for the U.S. We want to win it, but. We don't need to pay attention to it right now. We already got better offers than that. Our news getting more and more offers. Our news getting more and more offers. Kojo Okoro. Dude, I'm trying, man. Nobody wants you, Kojo. Probably because you're just really, really bad. New set piece coach, Nicholas Pereira. I'm setting St. Etienne up for success. Wow. That it, $218 million in the transfer budget. That's nauseating. That's crazy. I don't even know who's on the team. I didn't even look. Finished third in the Bundesliga. I, we might be able to contend for just monster European silverware next year with these guys. Yeah, and they also have the thing where, like, I think I have to spend it. I at least have to spend most of it. Also, Germany, I can sign whoever I want, which is like an underrated part. Not underrated. For people that know ball. Germany, we don't have the non-EU thing. We can just sign whoever the hell we want that we've been dealing with for the last two years in France. Doesn't matter who's on the team. You can build a new one. Uh, fair. Um, Sula Schlotterbeck's hanging out. Amar Dedich. Oh, dude, it's the American. Erjan Selmanaj. Or if he's American, it's Erjan. It's Erjan Selmanaj. That kid's not getting through middle school without getting called Selmanaj. Iker Munoz. Wow, his value is crazy. Dominic Pavlak. Oh, the vision. 21-year-old German. Jorge Souza. Oh, wait, this is the kid we literally tried to sign, and he went to Dortmund instead. He's so good. We actually tried to sign Jorge Souza, and then he went to Dortmund. I forgot about that. Ah. Uh. 
So star players, Schlotterbach. They do have Geo, who's very good in this save. So that I'm perfectly okay with that. Geo is nasty in this save. So I, I'm very okay with Geo Reyna. Archnep, thank you for the four months. Thanks for supporting the stream. Fab, you know, thank you for the 14 months. Let's go, Dortmund. Let's go. I'm not a squirrel. Thank you for the 30 months. Oh, yeah. Sergio Gomez, how's he developed? Very, very fullback adjacent for my boy Sergio. Okay, I, dude, give me the job. Give me the job. Give me the job. Give me the job. Nope. All right, let's see if we've satisfied our uh, our friendly neighborhood Korean. Kim Min Q coming in from Yonbuk Hyundai Motors. Uh, yes. Okay, he's settled. Thank goodness. We've got a national team teammate of his who's come on in. Branko can uh, hang out. He's now settled. Great. So we have taken care of one promise. We got another one going now, but just in case. Um, all right. Meanwhile, United States national team. We are still the coach of the U.S. national team, which right now is what's paying us way more than St. Etienne. They're paying us $1.7 million per year to coach this team. And we've already won the Nations League because we are the goaded U.S. manager. And now we're trying to keep the Gold Cup in the family. And then we've got World Cup qualifying to worry about after that. Because the World Cup is next summer. Which is what I'm coaching this national team for. Like, we're coaching this national team to go to that World Cup. All right. Nathaniel Brown. Won't stop me from asking literally every single time. Okay, it's time to remove a bunch of dudes from the team. Senora, I like, you know, I, I don't hate Alan Senora, though. He's very competent. Facundo Farias is also very competent. I think we should drop Anthony Robinson. No, we shouldn't. You liar. All right, goalkeepers. We have four goalkeepers up. Matt Turner's the one we're dropping. Diego Koken is the guy that takes the job. Gaga Slanina and Chris Brady are the two best goalkeepers. Koken's just hanging out. Um, defenders will clear the left ones first. So not Richards, not Dominic Youngs. He's, uh, he's one of those, one of those guys. Hey, who's that? Kesri's thank you for the 47 months, dude. I know I can check if I'm the favorite for uh for the um the job. I just have not. So Reynolds is gone. Scally's right back. John Tolkien was pretty good for me last time. I'll do a little comparison between him and Wiley. Huh. For the Gold Cup, we've got Wiley, who's got better crossing, better long throws, much worse tackling, though, but a better athlete with better strength and jumping reach and flair. What are the uh, the pros? and the Oh, Wiley dreads big matches. That's why I've dropped him. That's why he doesn't have a spot in my team. All right, Caleb, good talk. So Tolkien and Anthony Robinson are the two left backs that are like on the team. Okay. Right backs are settled as well. So we just need to settle up our center backs of which we only need four. We have a lot more than that. Chris Richards, Cameron Carter, Vickers, non-negotiably in the team. Selman is not one of them. The two backups that we had last time were Miles Robinson and Owen Otisowi. We might be able to do better than that with, like, maybe Dominic Youngs. He's so slow, though, dude. He's so slow. So 
Stuart Hawkins. Oh, the Zoe's there because of his jumping reach. Miles Robinson's there because he's a beast. We're dropping Reggie Cannon. We're dro I know we're dropping Leonard Maloney. I think we're dropping Jalen Neal. Boy, he's solid. He's just not quite national team stuff. They want to drop Stuart Hawkins as well. Yeah, we'll drop him. National team building is a difficult game. It's a very difficult game. We'd only get a starter and a backup at each position. So Dominic Youngs is gone. Even though he's real solid, should be called up to the U.S. national team. I don't know. It's Miles Robinson or Justin Shea. That's the debate. But I feel like, does Shea have anything bad? No, he only has good stuff. So it's him or Miles Robinson. And Ryan, better than natural fitness, but physically he's not that much better. And Justin Shea kind of kicks his butt in a lot of areas. They're more offensive areas. Uh, the actual center back play is something that Miles Robinson is better at. But I'm going to go with Justin Shea. Also gives us some serious uh, fluidity. So Miles Robinson gone. Got it. Owen Odesoe stays in the team. What are we playing? I even freaking remember. Four, two, three, one. Wait, he's hurt. How long has he hurt? Four to seven weeks. Dang it. Dang it. Darth Tap, dude. Thank you for the five to the four more gifteds. You gifted subs last like yesterday, didn't you? I consider doing a national team tutorial. I would. It's just I national team is a labor of love for me. It is not something that they pay a lot of attention to. You got to just add everybody to the national team pool of that na of, of that nationality and then just go from there. Aiden Morris is a really sound player. This isn't it. We have very good midfielders. Specifically, Johnny, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, Eunice Musa, and her John Selmanai. Wolf is hurt, though. He, he's going to miss the tournament, so fair. Brian Gutierrez, definitely not. Keaton Parks, definitely not. So we'll drop him. <sighs> They think I should drop Eunice Musa for Urjan Selmanai, and I I don't think I'm there. I do not think I'm there. I think it's Johnny Weston, Tyler Adams, Eunice Musa. That's our four. Urjan Selmanai. Ah, oh, screw it. I, I need Erjan Selmanai, you're going to stay in the team. Eunice Musa, you're missing out. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. All right, attacking midfielders. That would be Gio Reyna. Not Paxson. Paxson's not good enough. I know he's not good enough. And last time it was Luca De La Torre. Now I'm kind of looking at Facundo Farias instead of Luca De La Torre. We're looking like we might make a change. Facundo Farias, uh, the work rate is a lot lower, but the creative ability is a lot higher. The influence on the uh, on the game is a lot higher. Now, can Farias play right wing? No. Can Tillman play right wing? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep Facundo Farias... I know what spot we're going to open up. Georgi Mihalovic is not that dude. Jesus Ferreira's hurt, so we got to drop him. Alex Mendez is a barrel of fun, uh, but he's not a very good athlete, and that's where he loses his, his ability, even though he got the call up last time. 
Okay, so we're just looking at attacking midfielders here, which means we have Gio Reyna and Luca De La Torre as our attacking midfielders. But when you go to right and left wings, we've got Pulisic and Booth are our starting wings. Our backup wings are Malik Tillman and Facundo Farias. So anybody else that's not at that level, which would be Sandeja, De La Fuente, Cade Cowell, some reason they think he should stay. He definitely shouldn't. And then all that's left is strikers. Or we have Florin Belogan and Daryl DK. Sergeant's out. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Sean Perez. Ricardo Pepe. Gone. And what, who, uh, who slipped through, dude? How many players do I have now? 24. I'm missing one guy who's not supposed to be here. Who slipped through my incredibly accurate and meticulous combing of the team? I'm looking for you. Hassani Dotson. How did I miss Hassani Dotson? That's it. We have our team for the Gold Cup. 23 guys, 23 lads that are going to bring home the silverware in the Gold Cup. Hell yeah. Sorry, it takes a little while to get that team together sometimes. Johnny, I think, is better than Eunice. We're pleased we use defensive midfielders. It's close. I mean, I wish I could bring Eunice, and Way is disappointed. Yeah, well. Way, you didn't even make the 50-man roster. I don't know what you were expecting. Oh, I don't have, uh, I don't have my water. I don't even have a water. What am I doing? Hurry up, Dortmund. I know. Please. Scouting update. I'm sorry. He's playing where? Wow. 67 England caps. The real deal, Calvin Phillips at Barcelona. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Congratulations. Oh, Andre Klimenko. His wage is insane, but he's actually a, a gifted, complete wingback. I wouldn't dare sign Juan Maldonado with Dortmund, would I? For $84 million. Majid Leonardson. There's too many issues with Majid Leonardson. Giovanni Palma. Faride Gudais. Now that, I mean, this guy, I'm sorry. This guy would be an amazing striker. I don't care where he is. That athleticism is insane his ability to separate like we might just bring him in on loan at Dortmund I'm not even kidding his ability to separate with I mean everything except for jumping reach is we're talking in the green you know Paul McIntosh still at Millwall hey look if I get to Dortmund fast enough I could swoop in for 18 year old Englishman Paul McIntosh from Millwall but they got to get me in the door quick or else we can't make that offer if they don't get me in the door now, he's gone. That's my bargaining chip. I know a wonder kid that you don't know yet. I, I think it really help you guys, but I'll only tell you who he is if you sign me. <laughs> Georgie Fernanzi. Just shout out to Georgia for just producing wingers, you know? <laughs> they have to get me in the Dortmund. True. 
Uh, recommended signing Matei Kovar. Well, they just really hate my goalkeeper, don't they? Those are the recommended signings for my new staff members. And they're like, have you considered signing an actual goalkeeper who doesn't suck, my lord? My lord. Luis Junior. No. Noah Okafor. I will pay attention to him, but not enthusiastically. Is that okay to you? Georgia producing wingers like France produces center backs. Nobody produces any position like France produces center backs, dude. Leroy, Leroy Bautista. <laughs> Malam Jr. What is he? Oh, he's a wingback. I was like, how can you have so little technical ability and be so highly rated? A wingback. A hard-running, stamina-based wingback. That's how you do it. Respect, dude. Respect. All right, Dortmund. I'm kicking off the preseason with Saint at the end. I'm going to start falling in love with my team again. Okay, you better make a move. You better make a move. You better let me know. Maxime Rodier is now capable of going around goalkeepers. Got to select the team that's going on our uh, our little tour. Not anything groundbreaking here so far, other than Lorenzo Sage is now very legitimately that dude. USA duty begins. I am not giving a speech. We're winning the tournament. You all know we're winning the tournament. It's the Gold Cup. It's got to be ours. We have the best American generation ever. We have to win the tournament. <sighs> right, I never did check our odds for the Dortmund job. We'll check that now. Committed attacking midfielder? What is he? This guy's a pressing forward of attacking midfielders. No, thank you. All right, Dortmund. Basel head coach Gerardo Sewane is the uh, favorite. You know, that's just because they don't know. That's because they don't know me, you know? That's because they don't know I'm in the running. That's why that's why they're the favorite. They, they they don't know I'm in the running or else they would have made me the favorite. Toto, thank you for the four months. Dart Tap, thank you again for supporting the stream with those gifted subs, dude. It me it means a lot. The people that get them. Rambling Epic, the same to you. Um get the ad free experience, the bacon, the emotes, get in the subsection of the Discord, all all courtesy of your kindness. And I I'm saying thank you on their behalf. Just in case they didn't say thank you themselves. But Toto, what, why do NBA players need a passport? Because they travel so much. No! 
That was an apt accidental button press there. Pep went to Arsenal. Pep went to Arsenal. And that opened up a, a spot at Dortmund for us because Pep was at Dortmund. Following in the steps of a manager he hopes he's as good as uh, someday, Jurgen Klopp, trying to uh, become, you know, as good as that man. Dude, we already had a bit of... Oh, uh, why uh, did they guess they rejected our bid? Because we definitely had a bid of 300000 accepted. And now there's $5 million bids going in for Arnu, which we are not going to match. I thought we were still in the race for him, but uh, whatever. USA squad numbers to be decided. Okay. I mean, I think it's pretty clear. Pulisic wants 10. I'm going to give Gio Reyna. He doesn't want a number. We'll give him the honorary number 20. Everybody else can get the number they want. Uh, McKinney, Adams, and Booth gets 23. That's what he wants, apparently. But the honorary number 20 to the best player will go to Gio Reyna. He is the best player on this team right now. Him and Pooligod. Can he carry us to a gold cup title? Oh, another bad boy rolled his ankle. Dang it! Bad boy! Oh, sweet. 2.5 million. Dennis Kagan to Alaves. Ended up making a pretty good deal on a guy that we signed and barely played. That ain't half bad right there. Dorman invited us for the interview. So I have to believe that they think very highly of us. And we also promised. We also totally promised that we would uh, we would overachieve their expectations, especially with the amount of money they're willing to give us, which we hadn't even seen yet. We are very, very, very on board with this. So Kagan's been sold. We have all the ever loving budget in the world. At St. Etienne. No! Dang it! Macintosh moved before we could even go to Dortmund and try and get Macintosh. Freaking. Any reason I haven't declared interest in the job? I don't want to get fired. Um, because we might not get the job. I don't remember rejecting this. Um... Like, dude, dude, yeah, they offer 275. Cool. Money Funsters, thank you for the 13 months. Thanks for supporting the stream, dude. Alain Diallo. Here's the deal. I'll offer out Alain Diallo, but it's got to be regular starter and full wage. We're not messing around here. Oh, Taiwo Awani. Yeah. Thought they were going after my Andre Gomez. This guy's not going to draw a lot of interest, is he? No. No, it's not really. All right, Kia Rodia. This is interesting. Uh, Torres gets this new contract, which is fine. Kia Rodia, I'm curious if we think we should do this. It, I don't think this guy is a Dortmund level player, which would be the reason we'd be looking at this and like, yeah, let's move Fabio Kia Rodia to St. Etienne to make the team better. So right now, there are two center backs in the team that are first team level that can actually play in the league, Alexov and Rual. So we, we are like Dorman's left-sided center back is Schlotterbuck. And they have Pascal Strook, who's better. Actually, don't have a lot of center backs. Oh, Zula. But 33-year-old Nicholas Zula getting a little slow out there. 
And Nahuen Perez, yeah, he's better. And Jose Angel Carmona. I don't think we'd be buying Kiarodia. Get the job first. No, we're debating it because we, you know, like, okay, you could be cheesy and be like, well, I'm not going to sign Fabio Kiarodia because we like him as a player and we want to go sign him at Dortmund instead. But I think we, I, I think for the safety of Saint at the end, whether we're leaving or not, I'm taking the deal. Because the team needs depth at center back, especially with European play coming up, and I think he's a really good signing for the team. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and do that. All right, there's Stefan Negru, who's going to move to target acquired. Sangate is not. Negru is. Oh, it's a five-day injury. He'll be fine. It's like, did Tolkien just get not? Nah, after all that decision-making, I'm going to have to bring Caleb Wiley back into the U.S. team. We already checked favorite for the job it's not us it's the guy from basel which quite frankly i think is a little ridiculous i'm nervous every time it stops simulating now waiting for that inbox message i am nervous every time it stops simulating you got to introduce some new players Uh, what is Karodia's best position? Center back. Cool. Nailed the introductory press conference for Fabio Karodia. Nobody seems to be picking up on the fact that I might be on the move to Dortmund here in a second. That hasn't really, uh, you know, it hasn't really hit the uh, the front lines of the news cycle quite yet. No Fabrizio Romano tweets about the young hotshot manager. We have, we, you know, we have taken care of Saint Etienne to this point. Do they approach me? They approach me. They love me, you know? They approached me. No. Olympiacos really wants Pedro Bravo, though. Respect. Oh, Claremont. Like it. I like it. Regular starter. Whatever you just pay his wage. Okay. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. They literally asked me for an interview, dude. I didn't even have to apply. They asked me for an interview. They asked me for an interview. Humble all me. They asked me for a friggin' interview. Oh. I thought me with my Continental Pro license, you know, I thought it meant something. 
I thought it meant something, chap. I thought it meant something. All right, now we got to get comfortable with uh, with who we've got on this team. And prepare for the season because we got, dude, I have a higher reputation than the guy that they hired. It's ridiculous. It's insane that we are spending another year here. I mean, it, it is insane that we are spending another year here. I am, I'm a beast. I'm an absolute beast of a coach. That honestly, it might be the adaptability. Is that like a very well known bug? I uh, go to the Reddit. Um, adaptability is a fixed staff for your manager and doesn't usually change for other staff members due to this. Extremely important to get the value you want during manager creation. I'm kind of fascinated that you still uh, have a one. Oh, they're talking about the specific situation. So it just doesn't move. Because that affects our ability to find employment in a foreign league. Which is affecting our ability to find employment there. Uh, but we, you know, we... Um, We we can't do it. All right, Alain Diallo can go out on loan in the top league in France. There's no reason for us not to take that. We'll send him to Montpellier. Um Stefan Firetog. Um we'll just we'll we'll leave we'll leave the light on here. He's not the worst striker in the world, but Okay, we've got it. We gotta get ready. We gotta bounce back. We thought we were probably getting another job, but we will still hand we were still handling our business here. We were still handling our business here. We've got Bengani Kumalo, who we want to loan out. Obviously, bad boy, we're probably going to want to move. Uh, yeah, let's get a let's get a good loan offer. Let's get a good loan offer for both of them. Honestly, both of the Koreans they can't be registered right now, and so there's no reason to keep them around. Mamadou Zane who is listed to be very interested in speaking to other clubs. We're going to offer him out at nothing and see who comes back. And there's also a team in Feyenoord interested in Andreas Shelderup. So let's see if we can get that 55 million that they might want to offer for Shelderup. And that would open us up a, for a massive move. Hmm. Uh, Schumacher want to get you off of star player. If possible. Okay. Guess not. That's cool. That's cool, too. You know, I appreciate that. I do appreciate the thought that went into that. Lorenzo Sage, are you okay going down to squad player? Perhaps. No, but you did go down to regular starter, which is cool. Luis Torres just agreed to regular starter as well. So we have a very rotatable pair of dudes there. Warren Bondo as well. Left wing, we have Shelter up, Rodier, uh, Indala, Luis Cruz can all cover that. Right wing, we've got those guys as well. We've got Sforza. Uh, Sforza, Fabio Chiarodia. Well, I'm going to have step in for Alexov as the guy starting next to Rawal. Made $20 million on that exchange. Um, all right, that's the team for our first match. Dang it, man. We didn't get any friggin' jobs. Dang it, man. Oh, great result for Cuba. Antonio Quesada. Not really improving, but somehow has actually decent value. Somebody want him? Not on a transfer. We'll let him keep playing with our reserve team, but Canada beat Honduras 4-2, to so they're probably fine. They're avoiding the catastrophe.
Damn, yeah, I did. Dortmund offering me the job and then us not getting it. That hurt a lot. Um, but we've got, you know, you got important transfer business to handle now. Now that that's the situation, we have important transfer business to handle. I also have a freaking match review to put in. And of course, uh, Gold Cup group stage, we're just going to key highlight our way through. We should be fine. Um, we got the easiest group draw of all time. Yeah, I'm really happy for Antonio Quesada scoring for Cuba. That's awesome. All right, so we're working on Christopher Scott, Baleba, Graham, Gabby. We're down to 674. <laughs> we only have a ton of dudes. I, 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 I mean, we're going to re-up this report, but I am so in on signing Christopher Scott already. And I'm also down to bring in Musa Diara for a couple mil. Uh, that gives us four center backs that we don't hate, four very competent center backs that will be able to play and carry the extra workload. Although Graham Gebby would be fun. He's also foreign. Baleba might be a nice addition for the rest of the midfield. We'll see. Because what we're looking for, basically, because we're still a very small club relative to the clubs that we're trying to compete with talent-wise, we are st we are looking for those signings that are going to allow us to put the same level of talent on the field consistently throughout the season. Well, I'm junior. Hmm. Maybe we can loan in that. Uh, no, we already have two strikers that we really like. We can't go loan that other guy in. Majid Leonardson's like freaking nuts. Uh, Alda here, Cortina. Yeah, but he's foreign and uh, 20 million. Since when did center backs get so freaking expensive? We could sell Indala and just bring in Claudio Machado. What do they want? Oh, they want, like, monster fees. Okay. Well, then we would at least have to wait on making that move. I have. I don't have an issue with selling Indala. It would probably be difficult to actually complete the sale, but we need a few more players. We need a few more players. Yeah, Gabby guy's a monster. He's got 20 jumping reach, 100%. Look, I I love anybody you can find that's got 12 jumping or 20 jumping reach. You know that. You know that. 20 jumping reach is what I live for. Can we sign a star? No. We have not signed a star, and I don't know if we will be able to sign a star. I really don't know. Guatemala with a nice win. Yo, Mexico, come get your boy. Lost their opening Gold Cup match. Now all the Guatemala has to do is pull off like a draw or something. Mexico fumbled the bag, blew a 1-0 lead, and Costa Rica beat them in their opening goal. Dude, they're going to end up on my side. No, they're going to end up on... Uh, No, they're not, because they're on the other half of the bracket. So they're going to end up screwing like Canada, who wins the other group, and that'll be a quarterfinal. Well, hello. We beat Ajax in a friendly. Calvin Ramsey got a minor injury, but he's all right. Arnu has moved for $5 million to Feyenoord. They got the money they wanted. Good for them. Mexico, what are you doing? This isn't the knockout round yet. Hey, man, it's because I'm wearing the jersey. I've managed to curse them by wearing their kit. That's what I see. Stroke my milkman. Thank you for the three months. Wolo, thank you for the four months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Enjoy your bacon. Enjoy your emotes. Uh, job center? No, there's nothing left, dude. There's nothing left. That Dortmund job was it. That was it. Literally it. The last hope. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I need to order. I need to order my lunch. You know. I need to order my lunch. Do 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 do. Ah 
alas, I have not gone to the store. I do not have any lunch. I do not have any lunch to eat. Never mind. Guess I can't order lunch from the place at least I normally get it from. That sucks. Let's try, uh... I don't know what I want. Hmm. What food do I want? Oh, he did get offers for Hyo Sung Yoon. Why are they all in random places? This guy is afraid and doesn't develop well when he has to go play other places. Shelter up, Sane, Kumalo, and Kim and you. Okay. All right. All right, man. I need you to go somewhere, dude. I need you to go somewhere. Shelter up. You have your asking price. You're under contract for four years. If they don't pay your asking price, then we're not doing it. Um... Does he speak English? No. Literally only speaks Korean. I mean, going to play in the championship would be nice and rough and tumble. That's better than the second division of Spain. So we'll give him the option to go to those two championship teams. He's probably not going to have a good time if he was struggling to adapt to freaking France, though, man. He's gonna, it's going to be brutal. Tolkien, we're not, we're not going to name Tolkien to the bench today. All right, let's get the first team in there. So no Owen Otisoe. Adams, McKinney, Booth, not De La Torre. We're going to go Reyna, Pulisic, and Daryl DK. Okay. Showtime, boyos. Showtime. I know I've only selected 11 subs, brother. We are playing Barbados in our opening Gold Cup match. And unlike Mexico, we are planning on winning this match to open the Gold Cup. So managing the United States of America in the Gold Cup group stages, it's USA Barbados. While we're doing this, what position do you guys think we should improve with St. Etienne? Because... Just, uh, there aren't. Oh my God, he was offside. But I hate the fact that they actually just had a highlight of any kind. Goalkeeper? Really? You don't like Vladan Kovacevic? Striker? No Schumacher or Mokoena. DM? Oh, so we're gonna move Branko Vanden Bowman, Pedro Bravo, and uh, Jean Martins off the spot. I guess we. You know, Branko's getting a little old, maybe. We did sign Sforza though. Sforza might be able to step into a starting role depending on how the season, like, shakes out. Sforza has the ability to become a starter. Uh, defense in general. We did add Kiarodia, who I think is a better center back than Mika Faye. Uh, we obviously sold Mika Faye for like 32 million and then bought Kiarodia for 10. Middle, middle. Thank you. Oh, Polisic. Please, thank you. Daryl. Daryl. Ferdinand Oko is a Vanden Bowman replacement. We got him a wild move, dude. Did I get turned down for the Dortmund job? Yes, I did. How do you miss that exactly? How is it still nil-nil? 
need quality depth for the UCL. Well, that's what we've been adding. We've been making sure we've got, you know, multiple people at every position that we would consider first team level. We are on key. We are on key highlights. If you noticed at the beginning of the match, there was no kickoff highlight because we are on key highlights. The left back from Benfica looks spicy and better than Montiel. I don't know, dude. The lone goal. We finally wedged one home against the parked bus of Barbados. Now, I, I, I that left back from Benfica was not. Montiel offers a lot more skill than that left back had. He's a, he's a real work rate monster. Quadruple double. Thank you for the 19 months. That was funny. All right, triple double. You get a B minus on that one. That's a well constructed dad joke. Daryl DK, absolute tank when he's healthy. Just running straight through the back line of Barbados to get us a second goal. Greatly appreciated. That's a grandpa joke. That actually does sound more like a grandpa joke. San Marino wants me to lead their national team. That's like the bat signal, dude. You have to answer that call. That is like the bat signal. You must answer the call. You simply have to. He's Tados Unidos. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. Yeah, chat, wives are bad. That's why you should have husbands instead. Canasty, thank you for the 33 months, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Slay King. Hey, can I have that ball, please? That'd be really appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, that sounds like the caveman from the Geico commercials. I don't approve. I have wife and wife good. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Love that sentence. There he goes without saying, chat. Don't get married unless you're happy, but joke's a joke. Wasn't saying that the wife was the reason for the unhappiness. You know, it's just a... It's a dad joke. A grandpa joke, really. Sounds like one of those, like, grandpa quips, like, oh, the old ball and chain, and then everybody laughs. Yeah. Please, the love of God, never say slay. Slay, queen! Yes! So I had to get it out one more time because I was never allowed to say it again. So we had to just, we had to do it one more time. For science. Oh. Yeah, slay, like, you know, Santa Claus. Yeah, I mean, we're playing Barbados. I don't think you can take too much from a match against a team like Barbados other than just don't get FM'd. Get on to the next one, you know.
Speaking of, thanks to Z, I just bought tickets to the Lord of the Rings in concert in San Francisco. That's awesome, dude. It was super cool. It was super cool. Oh, get in, Taylor Booth. Get you some, Taylor Booth. Get you some. Yo, Taylor Booth. Get you a bucket, son. What a shot. Wow. Tiz, thank you for the 18 months, by the way. I appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. Enjoy your ad-free experience. I'll see you in the subsection of the Discord, perhaps this weekend. Oh, yeah. What a shot by Taylor Booth. Yo, Mama Mia, Papa Pia. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you probably just said, but how were the studios? They were really nice. Uh, the people were really nice. The studio was, uh, you know, it's huge. Uh, Apple TV uh, studio. Not Apple Wait. Dude, they just got Apple Wait sent off. They're doomed. Honestly, huge achievement for Barbados to make it to the Gold Cup. Kind of feel bad that we're just running them off the field, but you know, progress. You got to the tournament. That is the achievement. Please, sir, can I have one more? Please, sir, can I have another? Yeah, I mean, they're uh, not very good. Their best players are going to be like National League level players in England. Maybe they've got one dude in MLS, you know? Like, they're, they're not going to have a, a, a full team of, like, decent-level professional players. They're just not. And that's when you end up with a 6-0 to the United States in the opening Gold Cup match. That's what we love to see, baby. That's what we love to see. Type of dominance that we need. Type of dominance we expect. The desks have the armband? Dude, that would literally never happen. You could have everybody on the entire field sent off with the exception of Serginho Dest, and they would just leave the armband on the ground next to the bench. They wouldn't give it to him. Tim Madison with the 10 gifted subs, dude. Thank you. Sorry you didn't get the Dortmund job. I have a few gifted subs instead, mate. I appreciate that, Ange. I mean, Tim. I uh, know. Thank you for making 10 people's days, giving them the ad free experience for an entire month, letting them be in the subsection of the Discord so they can be in the next Save Your Saves, play in the Hampions League, all that fun stuff. I do really appreciate that. On behalf of them, you legend, Tim, and thank you for supporting the stream with uh, with 10 gifted subs as well. Jamie, how you doing? How are you doing, Jamie? A dingra. Now, that is a, uh, that's a high quality winger right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a high quality winger. We three days away from finishing the scouting report on those guys. Cool. Duh. Shawnee, thank you for the 35 months, dude. I appreciate it. Unbeatable U.S. set new record with 13 games unbeaten. That's what I'm friggin' talking about.
Hey, right, what's up, Nassau? Thank you for the eight months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Hope you're having a good one. What's up with Christopher Scott? Uh, we're waiting for the scouting report to finish so that it updates like his hidden attributes and stuff with our even better uh, setup. Facundo Faria. So that was his first appearance for the U.S. Ah, uh, shoot. I didn't know that. I guess he is born in Argentina and then converted to the United States after playing at MLS for a long time. Love to hear that, Dark Heist. Thank you for the 41 months. That's a long time being on the Hammers train. Uh, yeah, so Guadalupe just upset Panama in the Gold Cup. That happened. Haiti beat the Dominican Republic. That's supposed to happen. But Guadalupe for the knockouts, anybody? I would love to play against Guadalupe in the round of 16. Or, sorry, the quarterfinal. That would be nice. If we could, uh, if we could make that happen, I'd really appreciate it. I would love to play against Guadalupe. Thank you. Seriously, would really appreciate it. CONCACAF, Afcon said we're the greatest tournament ever. CONCACAF said, hold my rum. True. CONCACAF is the land of rum. No offers for Zane. I mean, God, Mamadou. Let's go, man. Let's get in gear. Let's get you out the door, okay? All right, Melvin. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can figure this out. Somebody for two hundred seventy-five k. Saint Etienne players in the last year of their contract. Uh, contract, right? We do have to uh, offer Bengani Kumalo a new deal. At which point he's going to ask for even more money. Hey, well, we'll give him a reduced upfront salary. We're actually going to pay him less than he's making right now. But he gets escalators if he plays in the first team. We have to do that to be able to loan him out, unfortunately. Uh, Kojo's not moving. Rodier and Firetog just need to play their positions. Shelter up. Nobody wants you for $55 million, dude. You're just not good enough. I don't know what to tell you. Do, do, do. Oh, there are somehow still Vanuatu players that we're just checking out right now. I thought we finished scouting the Vanuatu and guys a long time ago, but I guess not. Amazingly, most of the Croatians seem to be bad, too, that we were scouting from all this stuff. Do, 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 do. Ah, yay, the South Koreans. All right, players interested. Now that we're cooler than ever. Now that you got your big time manager and you know he's sticking around for Moe's Mindy from Utrecht. What is he doing at Utrecht? Yeah, of course I do. Obviously, don't know, no idea if it's going to be good or not, but I, I am interested. I'm paying attention to whether... Other people think it's good, and I will play it. If it is a game that is done well, it will obviously be right up my alley. That will be my answer to that. Like, if, it, if it's a game that if it is done well, it'll be right up my alley. Yeah, but I can't get him, can I? So why are you waving him around in front of my face? Why is Juan Maldonado always there? Always interested. The dude literally just wants to go anywhere that's not Girona. 
But he's under the longest contract ever on a release clause of $84 million. Tragic. This kid can ball, though. Thiago Freitas. Doesn't really fit into our tactic, but I like this kid. What game did Z just say would be right up his street? Uh, it's called Millennia. I think it's Paradox, who makes like Crusader Kings and Europa Universalis and Hearts of Iron. They're making a new game, basically. Yeah, I think we want Stefan Negru as our other center back. He's now valued at three point nine million. Let's see if we can go below that. I'm just going to keep removing everything and then just sending it back to them. Okay, now I'm going to negotiate. No, get, I'll pay three. I'll pay three million for Stefan Negru of Moldova. And then we'd have four center backs that we don't hate. One day on all these dudes... Z and greed. I mean, I'm trying. Canada looking good. Honduras picking up an important win. Canada's through. Come down to the last day. I think Canada plays Honduras, and that's dicey for Honduras. And they blow it. Or no, they already played Canada. Well, they play Curacao. If Curacao wins, they're probably through to the next round. So that's cool. Look at all these losers playing in the Champions League qualifying. Like Lyon. Couldn't be me, dude. All these losers. Hideous, thank you for the 29 months, though. I am interested. I appreciate the sub. <sighs> Gabby, uh, we're going to get that scouting report. Should be today. Should hit my inbox today. From him and Scott and a couple of guys that we are uh, obviously quite interested in. We've gotten a transfer offer. Ah, I see. PSV's made an offer. Well, that sucks. I just know you're not going to offer the amount of money that's going to make me want to do that. Negru's deal negotiated to $3.9 million. Hate that for us. Okay. I already had decided I wanted him, so let's, uh, let's take a peek. He has more interest in joining Leicester, but they're not a team that's offered. So I think he really wants to go play for us. So I'm going to go for squad player. Obviously teach him French. Come on, you grew up in Moldova and you didn't learn French, buddy. What do they teach you there? This is nonsense, Stefan. This is nonsense. Huge game between Mexico and Guatemala. Mexico lost its opening match. Come on, Guatemala. One time, Guatemala. One time. One time, Guatemala. Christopher Scott, the Frosinone winger. I uh I like it. I like what he brings to the table. Midfield, wing, plays some fullback as well. There's a lot to like. There's Warren Bondo vibes from Christopher Scott. Musa Diara. Ah, the price didn't go down as much as I wanted. This guy plays a good left back too. Which we uh We have Jacques Ecomier, but that's dicey. Carlos Balebas, the midfielder, who is very, very, very well-rounded, but he slightly doesn't like big matches, which sucks. And there's Graham Gebby. We didn't actually completely finish scouting him in those two weeks, but we did iron out all of his attributes, and he is a monster. He is huge and athletic and also a foreign player. Which sucks, but um, 
We're, 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 we're learning. We're learning, Graham Gebby. Thank you so much, Mighty Cal, for the seven months. Enders, I'm reading an anti-gravity book. I can't put it down. C. <laughs> Thank you for the 11 months, though, dude. C. Turkey, do you go? Yeah, I guess that's. We don't have anybody else for prioritizing. It's just that pile of youth players that we decided we were going to work our way through as a scouting department. What do you guys think about a Musa Diara signing if we can get somewhere closer to 4 million? I'm obviously over the moon about Christopher Scott. Whoa, baby! I'm going to do Christopher Scott right now. Um, All right, fine. All right, you just got Morindor. 20 gifted subs from Morindor. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> there are nearly 2,800 hammers on the planet. People with the bacon, the emotes, in the subsection of the Discord. And if you got one of those 20, be sure to say thank you. Chat, send them some love for giving 20 people the ad-free experience on Twitch. And of course, thank you for supporting the stream with kindness, Morandor. That is a big old batch. That is a big old batch. No! Guatemala. It was our guy, too. It was freaking Luis Torres that scored to win it for Mexico. Oh. Pigs, thank you for the four months. As a German, I'm beyond disappointed Dortmund and Bayern didn't take us. They'll regret it. You're darn right they will. That's it. Sell Torres. That was Guatemala's opportunity. They got a 30th minute red card, too. If Guatemala had won that match, they would have knocked Mexico out of the tournament. If they'd drawn the match, they would have made it nearly impossible for Mexico to come back. Now all that has to happen is Mexico has to beat Martinique by three goals. I mean, come on, Martinique. Yeah, they held Costa Rica to two, a two-goal win. A couple of late goals there for Costa Rica as well. We need the sauce from Martinique, and we might be able to knock Mexico out in the group stages, which would be one of the funniest things I've ever heard or ever seen in the Gold Cup. That would be absolutely insane. Uh, so he wants squad player. That's great. Let's go for fringe just to see if we can negotiate that in there. Okay. Maybe a little overly ambitious there. Uh, why would he want to come in and be a fringe player right away? Ye old Christopher Scott. Okay. Also, some I need to pay attention to is Champions League registration. So we're going to do that now since we have the... You know, why? I can't even look at it, bro. Okay, give me, just give me the. All right, we have four already. Diallo's leaving, but might be worth keeping him around just so he can be a part of that. Arnu, Bondo, Rual, Jacques, Colmier. So we're, we're going to have a bit of a reduced side. B plus, Callum. B plus. I liked it. G Mac, thank you for the four months. Thanks for supporting the stream. Callum, thank you for throwing in a dad joke. I appreciate the bits, but. Singapore. It's a boo plus. I like that. That sums up a lot of these.
Yo, do, 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 do. No, we have plenty of trained in nations players. We already have we already have that covered. We're missing like two trained at club player spots, maybe even three, which would cut us down to. I mean, there's 18 players outside of that you can have. There's 18 players outside of that. So we go to our first team. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That's it. We got one spot right now. And we're looking at the loan stuff. Obviously, one of these guys, at least, probably Lorenzo Sage. Uh, maybe Jean Martins, though, probably not. He's only been here for one year. But Lorenzo Sage, I don't think Shelter up. He's not young enough, but. Sage should be two years at the club, so he doesn't require registration, which opens up two spots. I'm talking Champions League registration. Oh, so that was his first international goal. What an important international goal to make your first. Daniel Gonzalez just moved for $34 million to Laws. I hate it here. I hate it here. All right. We're going to roll all of the first team players out there again to try and build up their match sharpness. And then we're going to rotate in the third match because we are playing Antigua and Barbuda because we got the easiest group stage draw of all time at the Gold Cup. Suriname is our pot two team because they made it to the World Cup in the last cycle. So Antigua and Barbuda and Barbados were the two trash teams in our group. And Suriname's the second team. No way. There's, I don't believe that they're going to get a highlight. Thank you. I like the idea that I'm just sitting at like USA practice, just going over St. Etienne transfers. How does he not find a pass into the middle on that play? I'm back. Has Dortmund come for you? No. They actually rejected us after our interview. They gave no reason, just said the other guy was a better candidate moving forward. And, um, you know, their loss. Their loss. We're in the Caribbean's Antigua and Barbuda. It's one of the few I don't really know. I think they're very far north. I want to say, like, east of Puerto Rico. Yeah, I need to go outside. I was right. So Antigua and Barbuda is east of Puerto Rico, a little southeast. I mean, it wasn't like bang on. You get the Virgin Islands, Anguilla, St. Kitts, and Nevis, and there's Antigua and Barbuda. They're just these two islands right here. Vibing, hanging out, right? And then like Trinidad and Tobago is like all the way down here. So there is a good variety of locations to be in the Caribbean. That they're right at the top of the whole chain. Booth McKinney! Goal! My second was St. Etienne. Yes. Uh, granted, we uh, had job interviews with Bayern and Dortmund. We also applied to Arsenal and Law. We had an interview with Lons, who have a ton of money. And all of that was rejected. We did not get a new job. I believe it is because of our terrible adaptability, which uh, we will overcome.
Well, it's not a bug. It's just I, I don't, you know, I guess it's a little-known FM thing that your adaptability doesn't change. You know, your other mental attributes obviously can change a lot, but your, uh, your adaptability doesn't change. And to be honest, that has not affected our ability too much to get jobs. Maybe with higher adaptability, we would have been in South America or something instead. But, you know, we, we've still managed to get jobs that we wanted to take. We just are not, you know, we need to have another good year before we build up that belief that we can manage. Nice finish, Weston. Nice goal by Weston McKinney. He's got two. And we have put away Antigua and Barbuda in the 30th minute. Don't you have to change countries for adaptability to change, brother? I won the African Champions League in this save and became one of the best managers in South African history. I then moved to the Netherlands and won the second division and got promoted. And then I moved to the second division of France and got promoted and then finished in Champions League places. Booth, nice square. Oh. Pull a god. All right. Their fullbacks are very good at heading. When's World Cup qualifying? We had a couple of World Cup qualifying matches earlier in the summer. Uh, the back end of the summer is Gold Cup time because the World Cup is next summer, which is the main reason that we're managing this team. But obviously, we won the Nations League in March, which was sick. And uh, winning the Gold Cup would also be sick. You know, we want to keep the trophies home with the U.S. Is he on? He might have been. No. Oh, dang it. Fenton, thank you for gifting a sub to Looney Loser. Appreciate you. Uh, it's a bug, though. Mine has gone up in 2031, 2032 uh, after four years abroad. Wait, your adaptability has gone up? Oh, it was on. Nice. Good goal for old Daryl. I'm pleased we're creating. I'm pleased we are creating loads. Antigua and Barbuda shouldn't be able to hang with us. Suriname will beat Barbados. And this group is basically settled, and then we play Suriname for the top spot in the group. That's where it's at. Um, Daryl DK's developed really well in this save. So is Gio Reyna and Pulisic. The, I mean, I took the U.S. job because they're, they offered us a ton of money, which doesn't really matter, but there's no reason I wouldn't have accepted the job. Like, we're playing this out. Also, we're trying to get to the top of the game. Managing in a World Cup is a pretty good way to do that. And winning trophies is a pretty good way to do that. Like, we won the Nations League. We got an opportunity to win the Gold Cup here. Looking like we're going to get out of the group stage with ease. You know, winning trophies is not a bad thing at an international level as well. Plus, managing my nation in its best ever generation at the World Cup. If we can pull off a surprise World Cup win, that would be maybe my favorite memory in football manager like it would be just beyond epic so i'm excited for that uh world cup qualifying obviously is looking good for us so far um just need to avoid getting fm'd no no yeah we're playing the full b squad for the final group match I feel confident that they have the ability to take care of business. We don't need to worry about anything. Um, we're going to get the uh, midfielders. Adams already has a yellow, so we don't want him to pick up a suspension. Uh, we'll get the guys that already have match sharpness as well. We'll get the guys that have match sharpness. So Scally's coming in for, not Dust. It's uh, Oda Soe. That's Justin Che there, and then Johnny already has match sharpness, which feels feels mean that we're giving him the chance to play. But subs, it's five nil. I'm beating up the Caribbean, dude. I'm like the Pirates of the Caribbean out here. With what country did I win the Nations League? Oh, there's a Concacaf Nations League, so we want the U.S. We just won the CONCACAF Nations League. Is that not real enough for you? <sighs> Come on, get your match sharpness now. Get your match sharpness. 
Uh, Jamaica was in the Nations League. They're not in the Gold Cup. I don't know what happened. But Jamaica was in the Nations League. Jamaica was in the Nations League Final Four. They, um, I think we played Canada and Mexico played Jamaica, and then it was us and Mexico in the final. Really, right now, those are the four best teams in CONCACAF, those four. I think Costa Rica's probably five, but the World Cup was misleading. Costa Rica's on a downswing. Well done, lads. I'm very happy. We've taken care of business. I mean, sometimes you just show up and you take care of business. That's what we did. The French season kicks off at the beginning of August. I wonder if we're actually still going to be in the Gold Cup at that point. Like, we literally might. 30 shots is wild, dude. I'm pretty sure I had, like, 42 against Barbuda. Do 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 do. Yo, Barbados! Surely their first ever Gold Cup win in a wild shootout with Suriname. Suriname, who went to the World Cup three years ago, have been defeated by Barbados in a scoreline that opens up the possibility of Barbados making the final eight. They need a draw against Antigua and Barbuda, and they need the United States to beat Suriname. What a result for Barbados. The hell happened to Suriname, dude? Barbangers only? Exactly. What a result for Barbados. And now... Oh, yeah, before we play our next match in the Gold Cup, we will know what... Oh, dude, McKinney freaking suspended for the third match. Love that for you, dude. Love that for you. Wait, there were 93K at that match? That's awesome. Well, they knew that, you know, history was going to be written, didn't they? Ashwin, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream of $5 and Jeff Bezos' money. Where do you see it? It was at the big house? How did, um, how do you guys, uh, how, how did you guys see that? I don't, I don't know where to live. What's the biggest stadium in FM? It was in the match description at the top. I mean, we could just go to Suriname, and then we go to schedule, and then we add in. Stadium. So it was Michigan Stadium. Nice. That is 115,000 seats. The next match we're playing is in the Cotton Bowl. They played two matches at Michigan Stadium. That's crazy. 93,586 to watch Barbados and Suriname. And a massive win. Stunning win for Barbados. That makes no sense that they actually won that game. 
Suriname is miles better than Barbados. Not even close. Derek, thank you for the 44 months. Wow. Ahmed consulting me about his international future. Abdullah Ahmed. I have no idea if you're good or not, dude. Right, I don't know if we want to lose him yet, so I'm actually going to talk to him. See what happens in this weird group. Panama just freaking lost their opening match in a very random duh, uh, L to Guadeloupe, but now Haiti beat Guadeloupe and Panama beat the Dominican Republic, so order is restored, it would seem. Guadeloupe is now on the outside looking in, but they do get to play against the Dominican. Oh, wait. Panama is out. Guadeloupe plays the Dominican Republic. Guadeloupe, wait, hold on. Guadeloupe plays the Dominican Republic. I'll just do this. And I can go back down here. And that means, the you know, if Guadeloupe wins, unless Panama wins by a better goal difference, then one of those two teams above them is getting knocked out. Getting see you later. Aster Vranks is extremely interested. Well, he's one of the most well-rounded players in the entire game. I love Aster Franks. The asking price is low at 27 million. Yeah, I don't know about that. But I really do like Aster Franks. Hey, we got one. Ah, uh, no. Herman Rizzo, sure. Our scouts are doing everything they can to try and get through the ridiculously large list I've given to them. They're like, if I have to go to Vanuatu one more time to watch this kid play, I'm losing it. But who would ever complain about having to go to Vanuatu? It's a very short flight. Noyet, thank you so much for the two months. Strath Carnage, thank you for the five months. I appreciate you guys supporting the stream. Enjoy your ad-free experience and your bacon and your emotes. Whoa, da, da, da. Allez, Francois? No. I don't parlay any Francois. He knows French? Who knows French? One of the guys we were looking at, I guess. No! Uh, somebody, I mean, somebody was bound to pony up with the 84 million at some point. Somebody was bound to do it. It was inevitable that somebody was going to offer that money. Thanks, Steve. Thank you for the 13 months. And we didn't offer for him. We didn't offer for him. I'm just saying.
Remember that one guy seemed to have lost him. So I forgot to move him on my short list. There he is. Forgot to move him on my short list to the target acquired list because I really liked him. Hmm. Hmm. We have one offer out. No, it's sorry. We have Negru and Scott out right now. And then I think we're, I think we have a full roster at that point. So we're selling to buy Canada. Robarazzi. Uh, not for a while, I don't think. Thank you for the 20 months. We have the Serbian Wonder Kid center back. He's on our team. Cuba with the 2 0 win over Canada. Honduras gets the win over Curacao. So that means it is Canada still first in the group. Honduras nearly flipped that. Cuba finishes with four, Curacao with one. And in the next group, the next day, this is the one where Mexico can get knocked out. This is the one where Mexico can get knocked out. So Cuba's out, even though they just got a huge win. Okay, that's not a bad injury. We're fine. Alain Diallo is set to loan to Montpellier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send that. Uh, he's not going to play a lot this year. I know he, he has the club-grown stuff for Champions League, but we we're going to have enough guys to fill that anyways. He'll be okay. Go take care of business, dude. Go become a better player, Alain Diallo. That is a perfect loan to another team in the top flight. Am I interested in? News to me, dude. Sir Felipe, thank you for the three months. Appreciate you supporting the stream, and I appreciate you doing it with $5 of Jeff Bezos money as well. I'm a fan of the Moldovan. I am also a fan of the Moldovan. I can't tell you the last, you know, if I've ever really coached a Moldovan before, so... A fun opportunity, you know, for me to coach up the Moldovan. We've got our team cohesion getting better as a few players leave that weren't part of our developing team, uh, team cohesion last time. We have Kim and Q, who fortunately does have loan interest from a number of teams. We're interested in that because we'll be able to increase his European appeal, maybe be able to sell him on at some point. USA are favorites? Yeah, I know. I know we're favorites. We're the best team in CONCACAF right now, and we need to keep it that way. Dude, the Dortmund job. Ah! Oh, that job was perfect. That job was perfect. I'm so upset. That job was perfect. I'd like to state the availability of my client, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, for $32 million. I mean, you have my attention. I'm working on Formos Mendy also. $31 is a lot of money, though. He's going to have to be very, very good. You know that, right? All this nonsense I'm getting from agents. He's going to have to be very, very good. I'm sorry, this guy is an elite player who kind of doesn't like big matches, but... I mean... Really, really competent 
carrier of the ball. He's got good mentals for a guy that has that high of dribbling. Can play centrally. I mean, hello. We have we have some very good attacking midfielders, but Zoran Alilovic is um, in my target acquired category. That's a real serious player right there. Ah, uh, yeah, now, now these South Korean agents are like, wait, I can get my client to Europe with that. He's not interested. This guy's not interested at all. Thinks he's way too good for uh, for us. Well, I've got news for him. Master of Ranks was a nice find, though. He is a class player, man. If we're talking about a player that improves the team immediately, he takes Branko Vandenbomen's spot immediately. We could up we we could open up a foreign player spot if we brought him in and then move Pedro Bravo, and then we'd have the money to go after like a home run. You know what I'm saying? Like a big old swing. The wage is a bit high. Nah, that's well within our price range now as a Champions League club. 26 years old, he's going to get three years. Are you kidding? This guy can play for six years at this level. Uh, let's sort by value. Surprised that Joao, Joao Martins does not have a higher value. I think it's just because we're a three and a half star club. We don't get the values that I think that maybe a lot of our players deserve. You've got Pedro Bravo. I mean, let me let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little something, something. All right. Ten million dollars, and we can have a we can have an Aster Franks question. We we can start asking an Aster Franks question. Ten million dollars, and we're having a conversation. I get 10 million for Pedro. We swap that to Aster Franks for 27. And we open up a foreign player spot. Pedro Bravo is one of the foreign players on our team. Faride Gudice. We do need to remember to check on him on deadline day. Same reason we're going to check on this, guys. I'm sure he's on the loan list. And they're like, hey, would you want to have Arturo Garrido? You're like, yes, obviously we'd love to have Arturo Garrido. But, yeah, I really, really doubt I'm going to want to spend the money on those guys. But I appreciate it. Appreciate the thought. All right. The situation, Mexico could very much get knocked out of the group stage. Guatemala's got a three-goal difference advantage. So either Guatemala gets a point. Sorry. Now, Guatemala has to win, and they have to win in a way where Mexico does not score their goal difference by at least three. So it can't happen. Mexico could get knocked out in the group stage. It is possible that it happens. It is, you know, and I will take that. That is awesome. We're going into the, the, the last match of the group stage, and it is possible that it could happen. Oh, now we get to play on Saturday a lot more because we're fancy like that. I like to see it. Come on, Guatemala, do something crazy. Dang it, man. You had to score the 92nd minute pen too, Costa Rica, just to rub it in. Uh, Mexico survives a scare from Guatemala. I don't even know what the match is going to be yet. I feel like you should be able to plan that out at this point. But whatever. Final friendly against Benfica for our club side coming up as well as we lock in against Suriname in the final group stage match of the Gold Cup.
Vasilenko down to the third division. Works for me. How's he doing? All right, Jan, get over it. Awesome. Nobody else to aim for. No new job, dude. We had interviews with Bayern, with Dortmund, with PSG. Nah, we didn't do that. <laughs> with Laws, though, we did have an interview with Laws. We got rejected outright by Arsenal. They didn't even want to talk to us, which, all right. Fair enough, home slice. Fair enough. Jaden Philogene. Oh, I've never heard of that guy before, and he totally didn't break the internet last weekend. Yes, okay. Philogene. We're doing a full rotation. Not even playing around. We're doing a full rotation. A full rotation without Weston McKinney. What is that? That's crazy. Okay. Well, we've already won the group as long as we don't lose this match to uh, Suriname. And there's a real chance that our win here. Oh, dude, the U.S. lost the last time it played Suriname. Cool. I had the we owe Suriname after that last match we had against them. Well, this Suriname team just lost to Barbados in the second match of the Gold Cup, so they're trying to blow it. If Barbados gets at least a point against Antigua and Barbuda and we beat Suriname, Barbados could slip into the knockouts, which is insane because I don't think Barbados has ever won a game at the Gold Cup in real life. They might have never made it to the Gold I don't remember seeing Barbados at the Gold Cup in real life. All-time Barbadian generation coming through right now. Where Suriname also should be on that, because Suriname made the World Cup in 2026 in this save. Yeah, but we didn't get we didn't get the job. We're at Saint Etienne. We got him in the Champions League, and it looks like we're going to be managing them in the Champions League. We'll see if we get some sort of mid-season job offer, because we've been at the club long enough to get job offers. Clearly, um, that might happen. That would be interesting, but. Right now, we're all in on St. Etienne, building a well-rounded team that we think could compete at the level it needs to compete at. Barbados has never made the Gold Cup IRL. Nice. Well, De La Torre, this is not a good time to get hurt because we want everybody to rest, you freaking idiot. How dare you get hurt? We need sharpness. Uh, Taylor Booth needs sharpness. We'll just do that. And then we'll sub him out. In like 65 minutes, we'll sub him out. Now, uh, Polizic already has full match sharpness. I see no need to make his legs drag at all. Would love a goal, though, boys. Would love a goal. You know, just to... Win all three group stage matches. Be that team that doesn't draw against freaking Suriname. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny Cardoso. 1-0 United States. A snipe. Yo. I was literally considering putting my reserve keeper at right wing. 
I mean, the, inter the, the death and destruction that international fitness has. Oh, Barbados is in second. Utterly unbelievable scenes here in the Gold Cup as Barbados is setting itself up to make the knockouts. Suriname needs a goal. Or they need Antigua and Barbuda to score. But right now, Barbados is doing enough. Antigua and Barbuda is also better than Barbados. So that is like them not losing that game is a surprise in itself. Lauren, dang it. Did I get, no, I did not get the Dortmund job. We were very hopeful. Uh, that hope was in vain. Yeah, keep uh, keep letting shots go, my man. Keep letting shots go. Booth, I'm watching you. Oh, my God. Barbados is winning. Barbados is winning 2-0. What a team. What a freaking team. Taylor Booth, you're coming out. Uh, Christian Pulisic is going to play the last 20 minutes, but I'm going to bring in Gio Reyna for Facundo Farias. So I'm not. I, I want Reyna to pick up some match sharpness, and I want Farias and Booth to both be fit because I think they're both good right wing options. I don't know who we're going to get in the quarterfinal. It might be like Panama or something. That's like an actual team. Oh, I'll get it now. Uh, Polistic's going to play right wing. Gio's coming in for Farias. And th th that's it. I don't want anybody dragging their legs and being tired. This is under the guise of making sure we get the nine points and win the group. But we're only beating Suriname one to nothing, guys. We have not been dominant. Am I in a coaching course at the moment? No, I already have my Continental Pro license. Oh, they switched their formation. They are going for it. Are we going to score immediately to ruin their day? Maybe. Yes. Goal! Suriname, after their magic World Cup run in 2026, is going to get grouped at the Gold Cup. goals Pulisic have all of them wow literally standing ovation Barbados is in the knockouts I mean, literally a standing ovation. Barbados has made its way into the knockouts. That is beyond comprehension. That team is so bad. But they did it, dude. They did it. Anything's possible, man. It's just three matches. They won two of them. Who's getting the easy knockout game? Unfortunately, not us. Because um, they, they were in our group, so they're going to get drawn against somebody else. All right. Yo Song Hyun is going to Blackburn. 
Have fun, dude. Develop. Get on the radar of Premier League clubs so they come in and buy you. You got it? Flirt with as many Premier League teams as you see. Yeah, I see Bravo up there. That's not going to be fun. Wait, Thierry Gale. Oh, wait. He's on course to finish as the leading score. That's why you're telling me to scout Gale. I should have known. I should have known they had a dude. Thierry Gale of Barbados, the legend of the Barbadian game that has led them to the Gold Cup knockouts and has scored four goals with three assists in three Gold Cup matches. Thierry Gale from Pro Shadas in Barbados to Budapest Hanved in Hungary to De La Gori in Georgia to Rapid Vienna, and he's been hanging out in the top Austrian league. Ever since. Wow. Um, okay. So it's USA Barbados, Costa Rica, Mexico, Canada, Honduras, despite a spirited effort from Cuba there at the end. But Thierry Gale is that dude. I mean, actually very much that dude stunningly that dude i mean really surprisingly that dude okay first usa goal for johnny that was a heck of a first goal to score then dude Jeez, that was kind of a banger uh no offers for bravo and he's unhappy with his asking price i'll make sure it's removed i, I don't mean to I'm trying to no, I'm not I'm not trying to make you feel uh upset. I'll just offer you out unspecified and everything should be fine. All right, Haiti and Panama are playing each other. If Guadeloupe beats the Dominican Republic, something crazy could happen here where Well, they didn't. Dominican Republic with a firm 3-1 win. Haiti tops the group, which means Panama's in second. Which means if I know how this works, we're playing Panama. Dude, Panama almost got knocked out by a goal. All they needed, all Guadalupe needed was a draw. And we would have played Guadalupe instead, and I would have been happy. Oh, the Serbians are getting an extra Champions League spot. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we just moved up to seventh. We are ahead of Germany. This is not a drill. The United States is ahead of Germany in the world rankings at this very moment. In Portugal and Croatia and the Netherlands and Norway and Belgium and Uruguay. And is one behind Spain in the world ranking. Our, our resounding victory over Suriname. Yes, so we do play Panama. It is straight lineup. So it's, look, Haiti is way better than Barbados. But I also thought Suriname was way better than Barbados. And Barbados beat them. So why not? That's not an impossible draw for them. Mexico, Canada is a banger. Honduras, Costa Rica for the Central American title. We love to see it. Canada wins its group and gets Mexico, which is just hilarious. Mexico made it through in second in their group. They finished behind Costa Rica, who gets Honduras in the quarterfinals, and we play Panama. And that is on the 27th. So we do get three days off, which is nice as things start to heat up in the Gold Cup. I don't know what part of the bracket we're on. I don't know if it's redrawn for the semifinal or not. We'll see. Football manager will lie to you. United just went in for Maldonado as well. They don't want to lose. He isn't interested in playing for Claremont foot. Dude, they're in the top league. What do you mean you're not interested? All right, let's just try that, that, that. Uh, you want to see me? The offer from Claremont Foot would see you playing a much better standard of soccer, so I'm hoping you'll consider joining them. Okay. You want why do you want to go on loan to Angers, dude? Like, how does that make any sense? 
Go on loan to the top flight team that's willing to give you regular playing time. Alexov just bruised his knee. That's no fun. Keep it together, Alexov. Also, we've been waiting on these offers for a long time. Scott and Negru taking their sweet, sweet time. Graham Gebby, you are a lot of fun. You're just a barrel of laughs, man. Really excited for you. We can ever sign you. If I tried the transfer bug, no, I'm sure it works. I just don't want to, like, ruin my save by like, accidentally signing some. Oh, my God, the team's in Europe. The team with the dumbest badge of all time is actually in Europe. Tamperini Ilves made it to Europe. They're also not, they're in the second round of qualifying. This looks like a first grade drawing that I did. The Finnish team is in the second round of Champions League qualifying with that badge. I cannot stress enough how much I love that. I find it nearly impossible to stress how into that I am. Shamrock Rovers also beat the New Saints. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Bodo Glimt in trouble. Yikes. Krakovia with the win early. Rangers lost to Anderlecht. Servette and Sparta Prague battling. Yeah, thank you. We got our fourth center back, Stefan Negru, the Moldovan from Bodo Glimt. Yeah, we're trying to just bring you up to the Champions League group stage, brother. Love the strength. Love the overall athleticism. Tremendous overall mindset. It's got some bad traits we need to train off, but a high-quality, well-rounded center back that's going to be able to match uh, what we need. So welcome, Stefan Negru. Go to the training camp squad, my dude. Sellout expected for USA Panama. Where are we playing? Oh, the Cotton Bowl, baby. 92,000 plus for USA Panama. Let's go. You. I there are going to be so many I believe we will win chance. I can't wait. Going to be sensational. I do. I do believe that we, that we will. Wow. Frosinone's Christopher Scott. Ghanaian, uh, international, very well-rounded uh, player, gets on the wing, makes things happen, plays centrally as well. We like him. He's got Warren Bondo vibes. Great Scott. Am I leaving? Probably not, honestly, now. Add him to the training camp squad, which I think we're leaving like tomorrow. But, you know, he can be a part of it if he wants to. The knockouts, Canada, Mexico. Let's go, Canada. Let's go, Canada. Let's go, Canada. Yeah! No, Canada. Our home and native land, glorious and free. Let's go, Canada! Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy with a decisive goal. Eustachio putting one in. Mexico with a 89th minute goal, but it's not enough. They're done in the Gold Cup quarterfinal. Jonathan David and that new youngster Hayward balling out.
Alfonso Davies, Tayshawn Buchanan. That's a serious team. They're going for the title. Honduras' beat Costa Rica. And another surprise result. So Honduras and Canada in the semifinal, I think. I, uh, oh, no. Oh, we play Honduras. Oh, that's sick. That's the easier draw. Canada plays the winner of Barbados and Haiti, which, you know, is awesome. Like, that is sick. Um... All right, Pedro, I, I think it might be time to move you, especially with a Premier League club in Leicester just lurking around. It might be time to, to yeet you out of here. Now, I do feel bad for Luis Torres. I have an international player on Mexico. I feel bad for him, but I like to think the fact that I have to wear a Mexico shirt today because I lost a bet with myself. I was able to curse the Mexican national team. Oh, oh, oh. That's one of the more creative, like, I'm going to insult this club insults I've ever heard. That That's, <laughs> you know, a, a for creativity, overall a B. Barrett, thank you for the 18 months. That That is a creative insult of a club. You know, you got to appreciate the creativity. You can borrow that and use that for any club that you think is washed. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right, Gold Cup quarterfinal. Panama, Estados Unidos. No, the Orlando Pirates have said no to Bangani Kumalo. Who is going to say yes to Bangani Kumalo? Child Detective, thank you for gifting M. Gista a sub. Giving him the ad, but yo, yo, yo. It's the most miraculous run you've ever seen. Barbados is going to the semi-final of the Gold Cup with a stunning upset of Haiti. Unbelievable from Barbados. They have beaten the Haitians who have a history of heartbreak in this competition and they've added to it. It's Barbados. The first goal, of course, scored by Gale. Their indomitable man, a water delivery from Mars. But it was Haiti offering a response. The Haitian national team, so typically underrated on the international, intercontinental level, always competitive in CONCACAF. But then it's Barbados and... Couldn't have dreamed up a better goal here. Could not have dreamed up a better goal. Pure quality there from Barbados. 2-1. Haiti needs a response. That's a lovely ball out to Jean. Joseph, 2-2. Two -two. And then we go to the penalty freaking shootout. And that is where Barbados delivered. In the biggest match Barbados has ever played by a mile, it's Braithwaite. Then Skeet. Nice. Deedson. Braithwaite. 2-0 after the first two. You know Gale's scoring, dude. You friggin' know Gale's scoring. They have to score. They do inside of the post and in. And they don't even show us the final goal, but whoever went next scored. My boy, Rakeem Lawrence, 19-year-old at Sutton United. Unbelievable. The four guys that scored. Obviously, Gale is good. We looked him up. Shaquille Skeet, 20 years old, plays for Gaziantep in the uh, Turkish second division. And then we have Dalton Lane, 
who is in West Ham's Youth Academy. He's an 18-year-old in West Ham's Youth Academy who has never played a senior match. This is awesome. Who's Braith? Where's Braithwaite play? Liam Braith. He's, he's not even in a club. He's not even in a club. He's 28 years old. His last club was in the Digicel Premier League in Barbados. Liam Braithwaite. Hey, man. Big penalty shootout from Liam Braithwaite. He delivered. He got... No, I don't want to disrupt their... I'm not disrupting their tournament. We'll remember to come back and trial him. The rest of their starting lineup, though. I mean, who, Green. Dwayne Green plays for Spankenberg. An amateur team in the Netherlands. Sick name, by the way. Codrington plays for a team in the Barbadian League. 33 years old. In the Barbadian League. Oh, there's an easier way to do this. Literally any way that, I'm, that I could do this would be easier. Uh, Dude, I don't even... Jeffrey Harding plays for Lynx. He's been playing at the amateur... Le Dude, he plays in the Gibraltar League. How do you even call this team up? Jeffrey Harding's a 20-year-old playing in Gibraltar. Kind of want to scout him, though. Like, honestly. Andre Applewhite plays in the Barbadian League. He is a Barbadian League player. Shea Prescott plays in the Barbadian League. Jomo Harris, Barbadian League, in 34. Kiesel Mars. Oh, he's worth like, oh, shh. This is the Barbadian Golden Generation, chat. This dude's worth 23 to 27 mil. He can fly. Kiesel Mars can boogie. He declared for Barbados early. He played 42 matches in the championship last year. He has made a Premier League appearance. He's made two. Niall Reed Steven plays in the Barbadian League. Like, dude, the up and down of this is crazy. Greaves plays in the Barbadian League. Anton Greaves. And, of course, Thierry Gale is their superstar striker who plays at Austria at the end. But honestly... Kiesel Mars. I'm surprised that guy didn't go on a run against me. He's bad boy's cousin from Barbados. No, seriously. I mean, I'm sure their backup goalkeeper plays for Weymouth Wales. <laughs> the Barbadian League. Lamar Catlin, Barbadian League. Akeel Applewhite. Available on free after spending his last three years in the Barbadian League. Although Akeel Applewhite's a sick name. Rakeem Lawrence. That's a Sutton United guy. Nicole Braithwaite plays in the Romanian third division, like obviously. Dalton Lane, that's the uh, West Ham youth guy. He wasn't in the starting lineup. Uh, Rashawn Gittens plays for Weymouth Wales in the Barbadian League. I mean, half the team's in the Barbadian League. Dorico King was in the Barbadian League, but is now also a free agent. Shane Motley, I'm assuming that's a Barbadian club it is. No, second division. Third division. My guy made the Barbadian national team from the third division of Barbados. Shane Motley, 33-year-old center back. That is an incredible call-up. Sean Field uh, playing at Notre Dame, which is apparently a top-flight club. Ryan Trotman, 30 years old, was last playing at college, 75 in Gibraltar the last four years. And then, of course, Shaquille Skeet, who plays in the second division of Turkey. Yo. So Delatore is injured, and I'm assuming going to miss the rest of the tournament, which is true. 
We are playing an actual team, so we need to get the first team out there, please and thank you. Can I get Serginho out there, please? Thank you. And then Brady's in for Gaga Slonina. All right, so we've got a bit of a rotation here. Booth and Farias. I'm going to go with Taylor Booth. Or actually, we'll go with Facundo Farias. I want to try him out at that wing. I think he's a good creative force. And everybody else is freaking tired. So this is what we got to do. Hi, Panama. How are you doing today? Kind of annoyed that I have to, you know, we, we do have to actually pay attention, though. This is an, an actual team that goes to World Cups and, non, you know, and stuff. Has an MLS All-Star team. We are way more talented than them, but this is the, co you know, this is the quarterfinal. <sighs> 92,000 in attendance. USA Panama quarterfinal of the Gold Cup. we lose this match we have gone less far than Barbados Mexico is already out they've been knocked out by Canada making us huge favorites to win the tournament we have to take advantage of that we have to take advantage of that what an unbelievable win for Barbados and their golden generation that has carried them to the semi-final they will play against Canada that should be goal uh, come on Chris Richards we will play against Honduras if we win. Gio. Get it early, baby. Get it early. Now, Barbados is where Rihanna's from. I like to think she's the coach of the team at this point. Nice. Early and then preferably often as well. I would like to run Panama off the field, even though they're the best team we've played so far. There's a friendly no, no. This is Gold Cup quarterfinals. We had a little World Cup qualifying earlier this summer. Very busy summer in CONCACAF, and now we're playing the Gold Cup. Our group was real easy. We won it with three wins. And now we're in the quarters against Panama. Ooh. Spooky. There you go, McKinney. Pulisic. Dang it. It's a very unfriendly, yes, it's a very unfriendly match. It's a match that uh, we would actually like to be very unfriendly to them in. Oh, nice ball by Farias. Should have turned and shot. Yo, Weston. <laughs> Dominant performance from Weston. McKinney with two goals in 22 minutes. Oh, I loved that pass. He should have just turned and shot. I don't know what he's doing. But Weston made it look like it was on purpose with a beautiful shot. Exactly how he played at Leeds. Do I have an opinion on sacking Tuchel IRL or not? I dropped a Zealandism about it. I think he's as good as gone already. I think he kind of wants to leave. <laughs> Well, this is easier than playing Suriname, dude. Christian Pulisic making it look. So this is why I wanted to coach this team. Because I think we are significantly better than any other CONCACAF team. This is the best U.S. national team that's ever existed in 2030. I think we've got a chance to be a dark horse for the World Cup. I really do. With our starting 11 that we have, I think we have a chance to be a dark horse for the World Cup. I mean, Panama is a World Cup level national team, a lower World Cup level national team, but we are rightfully destroying them. That was offside.
The, the way Gio Reyna's developed in this game, he is the best Reyna. Gio Reyna is like Dortmund's superstar in this, in this game. Who's the keeper? Chris Brady developed super well. Palasek, Gio! talking smack Lawrence thank you for the 15 months thank you for supporting the stream who freaking Ray dude that was a smack and a half all right I'm calling off the dogs dude I'm calling off the dogs I'm calling off the dogs we're bringing it all back to rest up our team it's four nil before halftime might be five nil which is an incredible I mean this is you know the type of demolition you hope you could get, even against a team like Panama. Uh, Panama is no Barbados, though, obviously. No way. I thought that was going in. Pulisic just feeling it. Every shot he takes back of the net. All righty. Pulisic, Adams. I see. Anthony Robinson. Ooh, Pulisic. Ooh, kill him, Terrio. Anthony. Dang it, Daryl, Adams, Anthony. Come on, Brohim. That was a weird highlight we got last time. A bunk, I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for driving by. Oh, that's a goal. Yes, sir. That would be 5-0 in 39 minutes. Oh, we got two more rounds after this, man. We got under us in the semifinal. And then we've got Canada or Barbados in the final, which is just a hilarious sentence. Surely there's no way Barbados wins again. No! Okay. Okay. Gio Reyna out for the rest of the tournament. We don't have Mexico. We're fine. Busy, thank you for the 34 months, brother. Wow. Spapa, thank you for the 26 months also. And uh, Jim Zabubo, just in case, thank you so much for the gifted sub. I might have seen that already. I'm hallucinating. Not funny. Uh, yeah, I have my leg instead. Literally, just take somebody else's leg. You're the best player on the team. Just take anybody else's leg. Take anybody, anyone. Anybody's leg you can get your hands on, just take it. Lauren Belogan, you're coming in, and we are also going to rotate out Tyler Adams for Urjan Selmanai. Salmonage. That's five subs made already. So I'm assuming even if we get an injury or two, we can hang on to a five goal lead. DK! Six nil. America. Well, I'm friggin' talking about, baby. Dortmund, yeah, it's true. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send Gio Reyna back to Dortmund hurt. This is what you get for not hiring me.
That's like the most impressive performance we've had the whole tournament. Oh. I like it. I like the combos. Valoran. I hate it. The semifinals. Oh, hold that thought. <laughs> and I just murder Panama one more time here. That is mine. Thank you, Johnny. And Tillman, slick ball for Taylor Booth. And that is very well worked. Make it seven. Make it a seven burger. It's an embarrassment for Panama in the quarterfinals. Tiger, thank you for the three months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy your ad free experience. Touchdown, United States. So fitting. Great little touch inside by Tillman. I'm like, he, you know, good moves from the middle of the park. Something to keep in the back of my head. Good moves from the middle of the park from Malik Tillman. Panama with one shot on target, actually. Very happy with the result and the way that you played. And uh, Barbados' stunning upset of Haiti puts them in the semifinal. Barbados has officially gone further in the tournament. Than the Mexican national team. Take that, Mexico. Barbados went farther than you in the Gold Cup. USA Barbados final. That would be, that's a dream come true right there. If Barbados can actually. It's Canada, though. It's Canada, though. Canada is surely too good. Canada is surely too dude. I'm gonna miss uh I'm gonna miss our first league match of the season, maybe. Laws is what? Uh oh no no no, it's a friendly. Oh, thank God. It's a friendly. The league doesn't kick off to the eleventh of August. Perfect. I was like, this is gonna get awkward. I'm actually gonna miss a match. Oh heavens. If Barbados make the final, I better let them win. Dude, I just throw. So Barbados wins a gold cup. So it's the USA, Mexico, Canada, and Barbados that have won a gold cup. Ideal. I, I, yeah, Mexico won it in 23. U.S. have won the last two. Canada won it in 2000. That's the only non-USA or Mexico winner of the gold cup ever. There have been a lot of vi different teams that have made the final, but it's like a very hard hurdle to get over. Weird Barcelona signing, but okay. Numbers list. So Jean Martins gets eight. Anybody else have preferred numbers? Mocha Winna. Schumacher gets 11. Mauro Redelli gets 13. Sure, I don't care. Magani Kumalo to get two. No, dude, you're going out on transfer. So who, who has 20? I think we've been giving it to Branco. But at Branko's 34, and it might be time to move on from that. So who else is uh, in line to maybe get number 20? Shelderup, Maxime Rodier. Who do we think? All right, we're going to give Rodier the 20. All right, fair enough. Branko Vanden Bowman. We're going to let him take whatever number he wants. We'll clear his number. Uh, we wait and wait and wait and what are we waiting 
info. All right, Maxime Rodier. By brief chat statement. I gave Kia Rodier a four. He's the other center back. I put him next to Ruel. I don't really care about numbers that much. We just give 20 to the best player. What about Dortmund? They rejected us, man. They don't love us. They don't love us like that. They invited us for an interview just to turn us down. And let me tell you, we will remember that. Let me tell you, we'll remember that. Reed, thank you for being a great mod. Thank you for the four years. Have a Gary. Have a Gary, Reed. Do 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 Yeah, I got turned down by Law. I got an interview from Laws, Bayern, and Dortmund and got turned down by all three. Oh. Well, Montiel, that sucks, dude. All right, he's out. Broke his toe, missing the start of the season. We've got Bad Boy, Ramsey, Shelter up, and Alexov all working their way back from uh, little injuries they just picked up in that last match, apparently. A nasty match, although those two guys will be back in a couple of days. So, Jacques Ecomier, step on up. Any big signings? Uh, no. We have about 31. Uh, not really. But not really, though. We have about, let's say, probably 25 million in the transfer budget when you factor in the wage we'd have to spend to use it. So, I get it maybe like an Aster Franks type signing. We've got options on our uh, target acquired list. I think we have uh, too many left back options on the team. Montiel out. Kiarodia can technically play there. I really want Musa Diara. It's going to be entirely transparent about this. I really think this dude's a stud. Nobody else does, but I really, I really think he's actually quite good. He covers left back. He plays center back as well. He's got Mika Fayish tendencies. He's not going to step in and be a starter, but he covers defensive mid, left back, and center back. It could be very important, especially if he wants fringe to impact sub playing time. It could be a very, very, very nice pickup. Yeah, I know he can sell Bravo. We're working on... The Mamadou Zane move, but that just never seems to work out. Fire tag, nobody, nobody wants fire tag. See if we can move him for free now that it's becoming a little too dead weightish.
Bravo would need to be a pretty solid offer that allows us to get Aster Franks in as well. All right, DR, you're going to have to go down from that. I know you're very interested in the idea, the concept, but you're going to have to go down. Impact sub, okay. Doesn't have a big wage demand. Backs up positions that we need backing up on. Oh, Alger wants Stefan Firetalk. Cool, that'll take that wage off the table. That's good. Who's this, Toulouse? That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Toulouse wants Lalamella Bad Boy. Well, then, how do you like all those apples? You like those apples? All right. Well, that's a top flight, right? Yeah. No, not Aster Franks. Not Aster Franks. Not Aster Franks. We really like Aster Franks. Don't do it with Aster Franks, please. Please don't do it with Aster Franks. You're going to say no. Napoli, dang it. Leave Aster alone. DR is a mid player. Yes. Oh, we want him. So that first offer, I'm assuming, was rejected. They're going to they're gonna reject that offer. They're not going to take it. I love me some Aster Franks. I remember making a Wonder Kid list a while ago where I was like, yes, Aster Franks is going to turn into an ideal box-to-box -box midfielder, and that is exactly the high end. They're not going to take anything less than that. Uh, they're not going to take anything less than their release clause. Wouldn't bet the mortgage on it. But I do believe it enough to leave it alone and not be baited into making that offer before I'm ready. Hassan Tambakti, Shakhtar Donetsk is uh, Donetsk's Saudi Arabian center back. Dorgelis Nene. Assume Bayern would take us? Yeah, no, uh, they did not. So, <laughs> Bayern did not take us. We are instead slogging our way through uh, a tough offseason building for European competition with St. Etienne. Run DMK. I saw you ask a few times. I don't know. I don't know how close he is. No clue, brother. No clue. Tough. I knew about him for years, and they held out, and they finally got the offer they wanted. Tough. Bitter pill to swallow. Yo, Hibbs, if Lelamella wants to go play at Hibbs, I'll let him go play at Hibbs, dude. I see Carly's new episode. <laughs> I didn't. Was it the hockey? I know he's doing that hockey thing right now. That's looked fun. I tuned into that for a little bit. Yo, everybody loves my boy Firetog, Stefan Firetog for free. He came in, he covered for us as a third string striker if we needed to him uh, if we needed uh him to, and now he's off. I know you guys are gonna hate this signing. Like you're gonna hate it. But I <laughs> this dude this is a very, very nice signing. Some every once in a while I do something that just runs entirely counter with what chat wants to do. But I think this is just a really sound signing.
Not a star, but very sound. Covers three different positions for us. Of course, that's what we're looking for in aces and spades. We don't want injuries or anything else to be able to take us down. He's got four good years left. You know, we'll have Jacques Ecomier and Moussa Diara are able to back up that left back position while we're kind of waiting to figure everything else out. No, there's an X-Men trailer out. I didn't know that at all. Maybe a little expensive, but a decent backup. Yeah. Where's um, Jacques? He's in the team now. I might be able to lower him. The fringe, yeah. Jacques doesn't have a very high opinion of himself. Which we, you know, in this case actually comes in handy because he'll accept lower playing time. It's going to allow us to not register Jacques Ecomier for European competitions or Moussa Diara if we don't want. Four million is a little steep on the price tag side, but that's doable. Um, very doable. Bad Boy and Kumalo going out on loan. Fire Tog leaving on a free... I'm going to delay this once. No, I mean, we need left backs, dude. We we are starting left backs out for a month and a half to start the season. And Musa Diara is somebody that can come in and play that position. So I, I'm going to go ahead and do the deal. Musa Diara, what's up, homie? How you doing? Anybody not registered for the league? Forza, Sky, Kirodia, all these guys. Well, yes, it's uh, 14 months. A hearty congratulations to you, dude. We might actually fill up the uh, – why can't I select that row? Oh, because they're too young. Okay. So we've actually nearly registered an entire uh, team. Kim Min Q and Antonio Quesada are both non-EU in the modern French conception. So they cannot be registered even though they're playing with the reserves right now. All right, chat, this is the moment. Freaking Barbados, dude. This is the moment. Freaking Barbados have made the semifinal of the Gold Cup. Surely, chat, there is no way. Yeah, okay. Seriously. Big up Barbados for an utterly magical run to the semifinals of the Gold Cup. Everything's got to come to an end at some point. Uh, their third ever Gold Cup. First time they ever got anywhere but last in a group. And they made it to the semifinals. An unbelievable performance. The, uh, the Bahan Tridents. Of Barbados. Population of 287,000, and they balled out. We looked at their team. We looked at their stars. They got a few guys. Uh, but Canada is waiting for us in the final of the Gold Cup. Should we be able to take care of business and get there? And here is center back Formos Mendy of Utrecht. Now, I know they, like, hated... They hated us when it came to the transfer. They definitely wanted to do something crazy with that. So, so I'll go with prioritize on Foremost Mendy just because he's an agent recommendation. He's looked like a really good player. Fenerbahce is through. Red Star is through. Heckens through. Kiev is through. Hungarian representative getting to the third round. Not a huge surprise. And now we play under us in the Gold Cup. That is what we have on tap for today. Royal Chalewa.
reject it. You didn't come in and give him an automatic regular starter playing time. I'm offended. It's Lelamella bad boy we're talking about. There is no other consideration, my good man. Why is Napoli in my save called Parthenope? There's something called the real name fix that you can install. You have to go into like the docs behind the game uh, and install it. But the real name fix fixes the names of different teams in the game. Alexov, this 18-year-old Serbian center back, has been getting hurt all over the place. Bunch of tiny little injuries that keep knocking him out of stuff. Shrimp, thank you for the 25 months, dude. I appreciate you. Not even remotely. No, I was going to go with a C plus. It's a dad joke. All right. Definitely a dad joke. Yo, Miguel Lucius. Oh, now we're on the Argentines. We're going to find some dudes. Now we're on the Argentines. We're going to find dudes. Oh, and the Italians. All right. Nice work, scouts. Huh. The numbers aren't agreeing with me there, sailor. They're not. The other Bungani Kumalo. Yeah, no, it dude sucks. All right, semifinal. We don't have Gio Reyna or Luca Della Torre, which, fun fact, those are actually both of our, um, yeah, those are actually both of our attacking midfielders that are out now for the rest of the tournament. But, you know, I don't see an issue because I brought Facundo Farias for this very reason, so that we could play in that style I'm going to swap out the fullbacks. I like my backup fullbacks a lot, Scally and Tolkien, and we're just going to go with them. I'm going to bring in Otis Zoe for Richards. Uh, I'm bringing in the subs that I, like, really trust. Like, Johnny's going to play over Weston McKinney. Um, Florin Belogan's going to start over Daryl DK in this match. Because we want to save some of the legs for the next round. Okay. Under us, semifinal, Gold Cup, we win. We play Canada in the final, who knocked out Mexico in the quarterfinals, and Barbados in the semis. Whew. Let's just avoid an FMing. Let's avoid a big old upset here. I want to get control of this game early, ride off into the sunset, and get ourselves ready for a final. Where's Booth play? I think he's at Utrecht in real life. Fernando Farias in the U.S. team? Yes, he's been in MLS his whole life. Well, his whole career. 
So he, uh, he, he got his first U.S. call up uh, earlier in the summer for World Cup qualifying. Oh, come on. And I've got him in the team in the Gold Cup wearing the stars and stripes. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh! Yo, that was a quality goal. Just Megan the keeper, Matt Turner style. Oh, Johnny Polisic. Little twirl from Balogun. Faloran Balagan. Brilliant. Brilliant, I say. Don't let them back in this game. Thank you. Good aggressive pass from Booth. Good ball out to El Capitan. Christian Pulisic to Johnny. And it's 2-0. And we are way too good. Johnny boy didn't have a U.S. goal until he got into this tournament. Now he looks like a natural goal scorer. They're sending two guys to Pulisic. Johnny gets an opening. Just got to hit it hard on target. It's probably going in. And Johnny Cardoso does just that, and the U.S. is grooving. Yeah, this might be the most dominant continental tournament performance you've ever seen. If we can end this with a convincing win over Canada. Oh, Pulisic. Pulisic! Oh, yes! Let's uh, save those legs for the final end, gentlemen. I right, look, I'm just coaching the team the way I know how to coach them. All right. We're just getting we're getting the best US team out there, and that best US team is doing the job. I'm loving it. Yeah, this is it. I mean, the World Cup's next summer. This is a nice tune-up, uh, nice set of tune-up matches in the Gold Cup for the World Cup. We also are going to have the rest of World Cup qualifying in the international breaks in the fall. So, hopefully get that squared away. I don't know if it lasts till March or not. But we have not guaranteed our qualification to the World Cup yet. Going to need to actually do that. The buyer of West Brom's a Tampa guy. I saw somebody say uh, West Brom had been purchased. Shalin. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait. I think I <laughs> Hold on, give me a sec. Halavi Patel. That might be like this guy's family member. Look, the Patels are like arguably the biggest family in Tampa. 
I know where uh, Halavi. Yeah, it's his dad or his mom. I don't know. It's his dad or his mom. So they own the Performing Arts Center downtown. They own a bunch of stuff in Tampa. They built this absolute monstrosity of a house that I used to drive by for work like every day. They the house is like right on Del Mabry. Uh Del Mabry Highway going uh like south. If you're going south from like like going north to south. No, sorry, going south to north on Del Mabry Highway, north of Tampa. Their house is like you go over this bump right near a line bar, and it's right on the right, and it is like two acres of Taj Mahal esque nonsense going. It is it is an insane house. And you can see it. They don't own, they've donated a ton to them and oh, so they donated a bunch of money to the the Performing Arts Center, basically like where, you know, like if you wanted to perform an off-Broadway play, it would be at the Patel Conservatory, the Straz Center. But it's like, I always, like Patel is in the name. Yeah, but I don't know, like, if he lives in that house, because it's a family. It's like, you know, so there's multiple branches of the family. I just know some Patels live there. That was always like, it's like Tampa legend. It's like, it took them 10 years to build, like my entire childhood, they were trying to build that. Uh, they were trying to build that house. He does live there. So that's like, that's like where he and his family lives. Or is it just like a family compound thing? It could be, it's big enough to be a family compound. Dude, Johnny can't stop scoring. Why is he bought West Brom? I don't know. When you got that kind of money, those are the people that own clubs, you know, like, and it, owning a club in the U.S. is very popular. People are very into it. If you like the sport, and he clearly does, then go buy a club if you can. Which group? Of, no, okay. So, like, Patel is a very, very common last name in India because it was like people from a whole city or region got given the last name Patel at one point. Probably thank the British for that. I'm not sure about the history of it, but they basically a lot of people got the last name Patel. Uh, but there is one family the Patels in Tampa. That's a that's a different breed. Those that that family in Tampa is like one of the families. Like you grow up in Tampa, you're like, oh that's where the Patel's house is, you know. That's wild that they're the ones that bought West Brom. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. That it's the the Tampa Patels just bought West Brom. Johnny, all for the hat trick, boy. Come on, brother. Hit the target now. <laughs> er, John Selman, I. Yeah, I feel comfortable. Dude, we're up 4-0. I, uh, I think we are going to win the game. Realize that might be a uh, an edgy thing for me to say, but we've also been able to rotate the team really effectively. Kind of take our foot off the gas. Another dominant performance over another second-tier CONCACAF opponent. And we're going to try and prove that we are also very far away from Canada in the final. One of the great matches that CONCACAF can produce, a USA-Canada. So I up his house on Google and oh my, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I always thought it looked like the Taj Mahal, or it has like the same sort of domes on it. And the funny thing is they put their house specifically in a place where everybody would see it. Like they put it in a place where you go up over another road. Like it's not a bridge as much. It's like you go up over another road. And so when you, right when you're going up and you look to the right, it's just like their complex, you know? The real family of Tampa's, the Shannons. Oh, I mean, of course. Ma Button, the Jeff, all over it. Excuse me. Get out of here.
One of the families makes it sound like there's a mafia. There was mafia in Tampa. I don't think really, they're just kind of a business family now. Just scaled that back a little bit. But there was mafia in Tampa for a long time. In Ebor City downtown. Sign Brady to St. Etienne. Dude, I'd love to. He'd definitely be way too expensive. Rangers is out. Servette from Switzerland with a stunning 3-0 in Czechia to move on. Shamrock Rovers is in the third round. Let's go. Let's go. No. Ilves has been defeated 1-0 by FCSB from Romania. The dream has died. Dinamo Zagreb still going. Krakowia has beaten Bodo Glimt. Apoel dominated. That's right, dude. They're going to the Europa League qualifying. All they have to do is win one more round of qualifying, and Ilves will be there. They're going to Europa League. Then they'll have Conference League playoffs if they lose there. If they win one more round of the Europa League, then they're at least in the group stage somewhere with the best badge of all time. Which is all we're here for, to be honest. That is what we are here for. Zagreb won against Real Batiste. Yeah, I know. I saw Dinamo Zagreb beat Real Batiste in what was it Conference League last time. I was really looking at that um, right before I got on. I really like Conference League. You get to watch teams that you don't normally watch. It's a lot of fun. Karabag beat Braga, by the way. So the Azerbaijani team might actually be serious right now. They might be oh so serious. Six games without allowing a goal for the Estados Unidos. That's what I'm talking about. I am continuously baffled by the lack of interest that remains in Mamadou Zane. Like... Just to me, he seems like such a good, decent player. And everybody else, I, I guess, I, anytime that's the question, the answer is he isn't interested in playing for other clubs that would actually pay that amount of money for him to play there. Which sucks. I, like, I, the thing is, I like Mamadou Zana. I don't have an issue with him. He just wants too much playing time. He does. He's going to get mad. He doesn't even know it yet, but he's going to be. Selexi, thank you so much for the five months. Let's go. Let's go, Elvis. Yes. Merle, thank you for the 24 months also. Driving on Dale Mabry as we speak. Nice. Wave at the Patels on the way by. They just bought West Brom. Following up from yesterday, house went live an hour ago, and we have three showings. Nice. It's a proper price you set there to start things off. Good luck with the showings, my dude. That's great news. These four lads go take a spin with Saint at the end uh, to make sure they can get fit. I like the idea that I'm flying back and forth for like trainings. Time difference, I'm able to go to both trainings in the same uh you know in the same day. It's amazing how that happens. How's the job market look? Hey, it's it's over, dude. We didn't get any we got interviews for Laws, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. Laws had a tycoon takeover. None of them wanted us. We got rejected by Arsenal without even giving us an interview, even though we, I, you know, in my opinion, we're a huge deal. Four-star prestige, international trophy under my belt, Champions League qualification in our first year in the top flight. No prize money adjustment. Okay. That's cool. That's the reserve team guy. 
So, sorry you got hurt. Also don't care. Not match fixing at all, but I'm playing against my second team in the semifinal of the Polish Cup. I'm surprised that's allowed. Got the teleporter ready for training. Hey, if we have morning training with Saint at the end, and then we have nighttime training, like in the U.S., it's possible. It's like physically possible for me to host two trainings. Now, when I would sleep. Good question. Don't know. Joke's on you. Don't need sleep. Don't even need it. Guessing our Zimbabwe scouting is not going to come back with too many productive options. Neither is this guy. No offers for Mamadou Zane. Yeah, I, I know. And that continues to surprise me. Who was hurt? Alexov. Oh, good Lord. Get those guys away from my team, good man, please. And we beat Napoli as well. Couple of goals from Luis Torres and a pulled calf for Lorenzo Sage. That sucks. Last match before we get into the season and Lorenzo Sage pulls his calf muscle. That ain't it. Chief, that is not it. <sighs> oh, Firetog's leaving. Cool. He's making $1.2 million a year on wage. Uh, he came in to cover a potential injury at the striker position. So we only had two guys that could play that position anywhere on our team. And now we're dumping that 1.2 million wage to Auger, where he will move and make 747,000, but he didn't ask for any more money. You know, honestly, I really appreciate that from him. Striker, thank you so much for the 22 months. Enjoy the bacon and enjoy the emotes. Okay, you guys ready? You know how confident I am? I'm already going to go get the water. Already going to go get the water. Uh, Weston, you're in. We do have the chance to get our... Full starting 11 out there. Sorry, Joe Scally and Anthony Robinson stepping in for Tolkien. We do have uh, Malik Tillman, who was our planned starter in that position for the final because both of our attacking midfielders have gotten hurt over the course of this deal. Uh, Gio Reyna's all actually may be available <laughs> for a couple of minutes. He, he's, he's not fully injured and can at least be put on the bench. We're going to name him as a sub, and everybody's going to be like, wait, is Geo playing? The final of the Gold Cup. The final. We're better rested. We're a better team. This is what it's all about, chat winning trophies and we have a chance to announce our full dominance of CONCACAF we won the Nations League in March it's the Gold Cup here in July the final between the U.S. and Canada who've only won one Gold Cup ever in 2000 but they have their golden generation and they're trying they are trying
Let's come on, dude. Come on, brother. It's America. America. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Canada can't handle John Mellencamp. Not in the final, they can't. Let's go, boys. Oh, Polisic, I love that. Oh, Taylor Booth is there. Davies couldn't get it clear. Oh, he's looking for Polisic. In a Mexico jersey. What's up? Play him. Yeah, one more. And it's Booth. And it's Taylor Ball. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Thought he was uh, freaking yeeted that right out. We look good. We look good. Just keep it up. We look good. We look good. Oh, no. Need to get wider. Our average position's way too tight. Come on, man. We're the seventh best national team in the world. This continent has to be ours. We're letting Canada hang around. They got a set piece. They're messing with us. I know we don't have Geo, but we might want to try and introduce Geo with like 15 minutes left if we can. Polizic's at a freaking 6.2. Come on. Yeah. Oh, let's go, Malik. Oh, let's go, Malik. Keep it going, Malik. How do we still not have this, Davies? Get out of my freaking way. Oh, miscommunication. McKinney. Sure. There you go, Surge. Come on, boys. We're staying aggressive. Started the second half tremendously. Come on, Booth. Come on, Richards. Come on, Carter. All right, Robinson. Pull e seek. Let's go, baby. Dang it. Oh, there you go. 
Tillman, all oh, love the distribution out to Christian. All oh, love the ball to DK. Yo, 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 yo. Subs. 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 And tell the truth. They sweet home Alabama. Where the sky's ice blue. Sweet home Alabama. Lord, I'm coming home to you. Give me Facundo Farias. Give me Facundo Farias. Booth out. Let's go, man. 30 minutes left. Come on. We got to kick on now. Oh, that's it. Tillman, good play. Polisic, yes, Tillman. He's running now. He's also got that size at the back post. Love the pressure. Facundo Farias. Tillman. DK! <laughs> it's Daryl DK for the United States. He has yeed the ha, and they lead Canada 1-0 in the final. <sighs> Get this out of here. Get this nonsense out of here. Richards, there you go. Yeah, nice block. Send these guys back to the hockey rink. Come on. Oh, Farias. Let's go. Let's go. Tillman. Farias, Adams, Scally, still Scally. Ooh. Nice pass by Farias. Polisic. It's Anthony Robinson. Oh. Oh, nice, Anthony. Nice, nice. Anybody tired? Anybody nervous? Carter Vickers is nervous. Uh, give me Owen Odesoe. He's got the size to help us defend this. Um, and give me Johnny for West and McKinney. Johnny's had an absolute stormer of a tournament. Give him the last 30 minutes here to be good. Can you make the music so it isn't so loud? Uh, normally it's not. We just need as much America as we can get right now. But I need a more upbeat America than what we're getting from uh, Toby Keith here. Maybe like a where I come from. Oh, hell yeah. I was as close as Canada's gotten so far. Dude, they're getting a lot of set pieces on us all of a sudden. <sighs> Big save, Brady! Big save! Oh, big save by Chris Brady! How does so you have 18 jumping reach? You're there so you don't lose that. Thank you. Oh, Chris Brady for America. Tillman, nice. Johnny, good spot. Oh, Johnny. <laughs>
Got one more change. Anthony's been immense. Let's get Richards for Justin Che. I just don't like the nerves back there. Justin seems ready for the last 10 minutes. He's begging me to go in. I think he's a good center back, so go get him, Tiger. Selman Eye's nervous. I'll end it. Or else I would go with Selman but he's nervous. Never bet against Brady in a big game. You can't do it. Chris, Tom. Good. Use that time wasting, Christian. The dark arts, Christian. DK. Oh, keep it down here. Keep it down here. Nice, nice, nice. There's the kid. There's Che. <sighs> oh, I was worried about that shot. Nice save by Chris Brady. States of America has won the gold cup, brother. Hell yeah. We've brought home the silverware. One nil over fake USA Canada. Build the wall on the northern border. Brother. Brother. Yes. That was way closer than I thought it was going to be. They played a really good game. Chris Brady made two monster saves. The world champions of CONCACAF. <laughs> Brother. Enjoy all that silverware, baby. So close for Canada, yet so far. Oh, this is them do something. Wait, 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 wait.
Dude, what the f He's 30 years old. It's not even just him. Chris Richards is 29. Dude, what? It's both of my starting center backs and Christian Pulisic. The World Cup is next year. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood, America. Are you joking? I have put myself through a journeyman in the perfect position to lead the best U.S. national team ever into a World Cup. And three starting players resign after winning the Gold Cup. The year before the tournament. I, I mean, we have the option to ask them to reconsider. I Maybe if we get close to the World Cup and I'm like, hey, I want to call you up for the World Cup, they'll reconsider? I don't know, dude. I have no idea. I am a gap. Chris Richards is 29. 29. They reject the first time, but they usually come back second or third ask. Uh, okay. All right. If they don't, if they don't, they don't. I am going, I'm going to do something to this monitor. I don't know what, I don't know what weapon I will use, but I have a pretty good idea of what I would want to do to it. I'm going to do something to it. So you can ask him multiple times. I will. I will ask these guys as well if we're gonna start the. Uh, we're gonna start the process. I'll ask these guys as well if that's how it works. Ask them to reconsider. They both rejected it, but I've added them both to the national team pool, so we'll remember and try and get them to come back. We're on an we're on an eighteen game unbeaten streak. Polisic just broke the average rating record for the entire tournament. Won the MVP of the Gold Cup. Daryl DK won the Golden Boot. Polisic scored the goal of the tournament. Chris Brady was goalkeeper of the tournament with five clean sheets. We did not give up a goal. And thank you so much for the tier one. Fokies, thank you for the three months. Free, thank you for the 38 months. Mourinho, thank you for the five months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream.
<laughs> the feels bad man with the rain time and the guitar is actually incredible chat that is that is world-class work there Uh Dang it, chat. I was so uh man, I was excited. I was excited. I was like, wow, our team is uh on the move, making plays, you know. Now nothing. So we're loaning out the other Korean guy, Jacques Ecolmier. Optional future fee. He has no interest in going to play in Serbia. Honestly, you know, fair. That is a pretty big downgrade from Ligue 1. I'm not trying to force you out either. Jacques Ecolmier, you continue to prove that you're good. I can't believe this dude's Barbadian. That's a really legit player. Thierry Gale. He deserves to be getting playing time wherever the heck he is uh, he's hanging out because that's a very legit player with good athleticism. Stunningly good passing out of nowhere. Consistency. He brings it every match. Good player. He's no Sandal Tim, but who is really? Simic now wants to stay at AC Milan. Dude, make up your freaking mind. That's been going on for years. All right, Bongani Kumalo. Already have a good offer for you that you've apparently turned down that I didn't notice. Now, you're a good enough center back that a team in the top flight is interested in you. I am interested in seeing how good that is. No, we're going to pour the water. I know, it's going to be sad. We're going to pour the water. Polisic retired at 30 years old from the national 30 years old. He's like, dude, I just don't want to play the midweeks this year. He's like, I do not want to play the international breaks this year. They he just come to me and tell me that we don't need you to qualify for the world cup. I'll just bring Malik Tillman in. We'll be fine. We don't need him. Just show up at the World Cup, dude. That's when we need you. I can make a little deal under the table. You don't have to give me the heart attack of a lifetime and say you are quite literally retiring from international play. I get it. You've been doing it a long time. You don't want to do it anymore. Playing, you know, Antigua and Barbuda away in February. Or, sorry, in December. Ah, uh, I see. Instant fixture congestion. Well, we just love that, don't we? You look more disappointed than ever. I mean, I was thinking, like, you know, you get up, like, this is not an opportunity that you can just create and start a game with. To have worked our way into a position where we've rightfully earned to coach the best U.S. national team that, at least in terms of football manager, will, like, ever exist. If you send it a hundred years forward, you won't end up with as many good players in the U.S. national team as we are gonna we are supposed to have in this World Cup that we're coming up to. They won't exist.
All right, shelter up. Uh, I will set this up tomorrow. I mean, Monday, because tomorrow's Saturday. But we'll set this up on Monday. We'll set it up Monday because, my goodness, we somehow won the tournament. We, we somehow won the tournament, and we feel terrible. We won the tournament, but three starting players decided they were leaving. It's the curse of the Mexico jersey. That's what it is. Bye.